As we all know, today's May 8th, 2024, and the time is a little bit after 7, 7.09 p.m. I now call to order the second session of the 2024 Annual Town Meeting for the Town of Stoughton. The meeting is now in session. This town meeting is being held in person at the Stoughton High School Auditorium, and the address is 232 Pearl Street, Stoughton. This meeting is also being broadcast live through the Stoughton Media Access Corporation is, and is being recorded for future broadcasting. Please rise if you are able and join me in pledging allegiance to our national flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. All right, just a couple of quick announcements. Um, I'm asked these microphones are on the stands in the aisleways. Please, they're going to be stay, turned on. Please leave them on. We're hoping we're not going to get any feedback like we did on Monday evening. So don't turn them off. And we're also asked, don't do what I'm doing. Uh, pick up the microphone out of the stand. The moderator has special privileges, if you haven't noticed. Um, it's easy if, easier if I hold the microphone in my hand, but I think these microphones, if you don't pull them out, they, you won't get any feedback on them. Do you have a point of order, sir? Please rise, state your name, and your point of order. Yeah, please, don't move the microphone. Peter Murphy, Precinct 2. Uh, point of order, there are some disabled people here that require a microphone. Are we allowed to bring the microphone to them? I'm getting a thumbs up. Yes, that's the affirmative. Thank you. Are you going to be the designated person, tr trained and... I will be if voted upon. Okay, thank you. Okay, you're going to be certifiable, okay? Okay. All right, uh, let me go forward here. Uh, on Monday evening, that was May 6th, I did, int did introduce already our town officials. There's only one change I would like to introduce to the town meeting reps tonight, the change in town council. This evening we have Kate Federoff from the law firm of me, Talamir, and Acosta. This is Kate right here. She'll be guiding us this evening. Oh. And also we have Kelly from the clerk's office. This is Kelly up here on the left. Thank you. And has anybody else changed on the front tables? I don't believe so. Everybody else, everybody else remains the same. All right, so at this time we have to determine, uh, I should ask, has anybody not been sworn in as a town meeting rep? Anybody, just raise your hand, we'll get you sworn in right away. I don't see anybody this evening. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Davis. I'm gonna turn the microphone over to the acting town clerk. Samantha Rigo. Sorry to put you on the spot, Lester. Yep. <laughs> Raise your right hand. And I'm going to say some words to you. Just say I do when I'm done, okay? Do you solemnly swear that you will faithfully and impartially perform the duties of town meeting representative according to the terms of the town charter, bylaws of the town of Stoughton, and the general laws of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts? I do. Thank you, Samantha. Congratulations to Mr. Davis. All right, next we have to determine whether we have a quorum to proceed with this town meeting this evening. I'm going to call out East Precinct Chair. I'm going to ask you how many town meeting reps are present in your precinct. First up is Precinct 1, Juan Fox. 11, Precinct 1. George Delinsky, Precinct 2. 17. 17 for Precinct 2. Matt Callis for Precinct 3. 17. 17 for Precinct 3. Julie Gito for Precinct 4. 20. 20 for Precinct 4. Carmel Drews for Precinct 5. 12 for Precinct 5. Bob Kirby for Precinct 6. 15, 15 for Precinct 6. Diane Dolan for Precinct 7. 15, 15 for Precinct 7. And Dave Sheehan for Precinct 8. 15 for Precinct 8. All right, let's provide a few minutes for the town clerks to tally the numbers of the town meeting reps present in the auditorium. 122. 
All right, we currently have 122 Tom Inning reps in the auditorium. Our quorum is 85 required. So with 122, we do have a quorum. So I declare a quorum is present. We will proceed with the meeting at hand. All right, again, like we did on Monday night, we need to test the clickers to make sure everybody's clicker is working because we don't want to start voting and all of a sudden get an issue with one or two members couldn't vote in the proceedings. All right, do we have something on the screen? Are we ready? With your clickers in hand, please press yes, no, or abstain, and you'll be counted. 12 seconds left. All right, time's up. Did anybody have a problem with their clicker? Well, not everybody probably voted. Did everybody vote? Was that Sam? Well, some t did everybody vote? I guess the question. Well, we're three shy. Okay, there's better people in the audience in the field than me than with mathematicians. Uh, well, you want to vote one more time? Yeah, let's, can we put that up one more time? We'll replicate that screen. We do have enough for a quorum, but I just want to make sure people's clickers are working. If you can. If you can't, Sam, don't worry. Okay. Let's just take a moment. No, we're fine. We're just, it's, just setting it up. Question. Question. Miss Walsh, someone's going to bring the microphone to you. Yes, thank you. This is Peter Murphy bringing the mic. Uh, Cynthia Walsh, 1096 Park Street, Precinct 3. But I know Peter because we used to sit, I used to be in Precinct 2. Is there a way to make the numbers bigger? I cannot see whether my clicker's working because I can't read the screen. Here, here you go. Your selection will come up on the screen of your clicker, too. It comes up. It'll say whatever yeah, you click. Yeah, I know what that means, but I can't. And if you see a battery symbol, just keep clicking. They just need to be woken up because they only get used once a year. Sometimes twice. Thank you. So you look on your screen on your little clicker when you press the button. Are we ready to vote? I got the news on mine. Okay, please vote now. You have 20 seconds. And look at your screen. It should say what you just voted, one, two, or three. Okay, everybody should be good. We have uh, eight seconds left. Does anybody have a question with their clicker? Okay. Okay. What are we at? What's our numbers? 120. Are we two off? Okay, plus or minus. Plus or minus. We'll do a plus or minus. All right. All right. We're going to proceed. We're going to proceed. All right. Uh, just to remind people, we voted in the procedural motions on Monday night. That was May 6. They still remain in effect. And as you may recall, we voted as a first order of business for May 8th, Article 12, Article 13, and Article 49. Uh, before we proceed to those, I just want to remind everybody, we should all work with each other, be civil, and we're all neighbors. We all live in the same community. So at the end of the evening, we should all try to remain friends. Things get kind of heated sometimes. That's fine. We're all passionate about the different articles and what we all feel about them. But we still have to work together as a town, live together as a town, and we're all neighbors, believe it or not. So let's proceed accordingly this evening and the rest of the town meeting sessions. Oh, yeah, I'm also reminded, please silence your cell phones. 
We don't want to hear any different tunes or anything during the evening. All right, so uh, please do that. And as we proceed this evening, I'll explain, explain, I'm getting a little tongue-tied here, I'll explain a little further about different things going on this evening, just for transparency. All right, so for Article 12, I have a list of who's going to, um, Vaughn and Oki, and you're going to read the motion, please? Yes. You're going to go into contracts. But Let's the other, first identify yourself, please. Oh, John Anzavino, Precinct 4, Vice Chairman of the Finance Committee. We move 12, 13, and 49 to tonight. 49 has to do with civil service. The contracts have civil service removal included in them. I would think it would be more prudent to go through Article 49 before you did 12 and 13. Just my opinion. All right, let me, uh, can I put town council on the spot? Could you, you just have to press that button, test turn green. Certainly, if that's the pleasure of the meeting, um, we can move 49 first to see if that passes, which may um, influence your decisions on 12 and 13. It doesn't make the move, but certainly it might affect your decision on 12 and 13. So you can take 49 first. Uh, let's try to take this a simple way. I'm, I'll, I'll ask for a voice vote if we want to take 49, since it was all on the procedural motions that we do 12, 13, and 49 this evening. If, if we want to do 49 first, all those in favor by voice vote, say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Okay, unanimous. So let's do 49 first. That was clear. Thank you all for voting. So 49, Mr. Vaughn Anokian, can you... Uh, Someone give me a page reference. Page 85. First, uh, turn to page 85 in your books. And it's also up, on, it will be up on the screen momentarily. We just have the electronic thing slow us down a little bit, but we'll get it up there in a moment. Just one minute, Mr. Nokian. Just want to make sure the article, or the, at least the motion's on the screen. And that's on page 85 in our books. And what we're going to do this evening, I should also mention, since there is a amended or substitute motion on this, first we're going to put the motion from the book on the screen, accept that, and then at the time, whoever's going to make the amended motion, they make the amended motion, then we have to accept that. Well, first we have to second, that amendment, second the amended motion, accept that, and that becomes the, well, in this case, it's a only a language change in a section of the Main motion, right? Correct. So it would be like an amended, the main motion as amended. That's correct. So um, when the amendment comes before the meeting, the meeting decides whether or not to accept the amendment, and then you'll be voting on the motion as it has been amended. Okay, so it would be two parts, two votes. Everybody clear on that? We'll just try to make this as simple as possible. Okay, is the... Uh, Articles and motions on the screen. All right, Mr. Nokian. The proposed motion is that the town vote to approve Article 49 as printed in the warrant. Second. Okay. Moved by Mr. Nokian and seconded by John Enzimino. All right. Now, can I have the Finance Committee report, please? The Finance Committee voted 8 to 3 to recommend the motion for Article 49 as written in the warrant. Okay, now whose explanation is that in the book? Is that yours, Juan? Or is that somebody else's? No, we don't have an explanation. What explanation? There's an explanation on that page. I'm sorry, my bad. I'm looking at different things here. No, there is an explanation. You really like my reading, don't oh, you? Oh, the next page, I thought I saw that. Okay, where did that come from? And just... All right, well, I mean, anyways, let me do this. Okay, that's what I thought. Okay, let, let me, since, let me, I just got ahead of myself here. Finance Committee just read their recommendation. Let me read into governmental relations. They voted six to zero to recommend Article 49 in the town meeting. 
And Cynthia, would you like to redraw? Yes. Mr. Murphy, come on. Uh, Cynthia Walsh, I'm the chair of Municipal Operations. Municipal Operations voted 6 to 0 to approve Article 49. Thank you very much, Cynthia. So this explanation, do we know where it came from, the source? I imagine it came from the select board. Do we read that into the record? You may. Oh, I might read the explanation into the record just for the facts here. This article which is 49, authorizes the town to remove all sworn personnel from civil service from the requirements of civil service. Because the town changed its form of government from open town meeting to representative town meeting, the town will seek special legislation to ratify the town meeting's vote and ensure its efficacy. All right? So at this point in time, I think I covered everything here, we're going to uh, hear from the presenter, Chief McNamara. Chief, please introduce yourself. And I'm sorry, Chief Carroll also. But I think you want to get the amended motion out there. Evening, can, I, can I interrupt, uh, sorry, interrupt Chief McNamara? I think for clarity purposes, there may be a motion to amend by Mr. Cavey, um, which is really important for the town meeting to hear prior to giving the presentation. Okay, so before we do that, we're going to have to vote. First, I'll need a second on this amended motion, and then we'll have to vote to accept the amended motion. Right, correct. 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 All right, Mr. Cavey, go ahead, please. Okay, I move that the town vote to approve Article 49 as printed in the warrant, except Paragraph 2, pertaining to the fire department and to submit special legislation as printed, except as pertaining to members of the fire department, authorizing the town manager to amend such legislation, effectuating the same. Okay, is, is there a second? Scott Carrara, Carrara seconded for us. Okay, no, no, no argument about this, okay? All right, so now, uh, can we get that on the screen? We're going to have to vote the amended article. Mr. Moderator, I have a question about sure. the amended motion. Is that appropriate to ask? Sure, go ahead. I understand the point of this is to remove fire, if I'm understanding this correctly. But fire is um, in this article three different times. It's not only paragraph two. It's also in the indentation for special acts and then the indentation for section two. So I'm wondering if you want to say instead of removing paragraph two, if you'd rather say remove any language relating to the fire department. That's just my understanding and if I'm wrong, I will sit down and talk. Okay, just give us a moment, see if I get someone to answer that. So we're gonna have discussion, I believe. It's probably good to have discussion on the amendment before we vote it in. Do you want me to explain? Yeah, yeah, go <laughs> okay, so just to be clear for the membership, this is in, the amended motion is intended to remove only police officers from civil service and the fire department will remain in civil service. And as Mr. Cavey read the m amended motion, it says, yes, remove paragraph two. And I, I realize it's difficult because you're just hearing it verbally, but it says remove paragraph two and also remove any references to fire department personnel. So it says specifically, and to submit special legislation as printed except as pertains to members of the fire department. So the idea on the amendment is we're removing police, but not removing fire. And if, if you also would permit me, Mr. Bronerator, to sure, explain, right um, when, when the article was originally submitted for uh, the select board's review and approval and to comply with the timeframes for getting everything to finance committee, um, we were hopeful that we would reach an agreement with the fire department on removal times it, it took longer than expected. We don't yet have an agreement with the fire department. We do have agreements with uh, both units in the police department. As a consequence and as a courtesy to the fire department, we removed them from this article because, again, we haven't settled with them. Okay, thank you very much, Town Council. Point right, of order, Mr. Moderator. Who's asking? 
over here. If you would. John Angevino, Precinct 4. You know, in the past, we've always required a motion to be presented the way they want it to be voted. I don't believe this conforms to how we've operated for years. I'd like to see the actual motion with what's going to come out in front of us. And I believe part of this said it would just leave it. It authorized the town manager to amend any such legislation effectuating the same. Would that, in effect, be putting it back in the way it's written now? I think it's very loose, that's all. That's just my opinion. It does add some, uh, you know, I don't, want, I don't want to actually define anything to it. Let me just strike that. Um, it's a little confusing at times for someone to just pick up and amend a motion like that because where does it go in exactly in here? Usually we do have, I'm going to let it go this evening. I think we just have to let it go this evening. Well, because the moderator's decision, you know. Hold on a second. You have to, you have to let the moderator finish, you know, first, okay? Because otherwise we need to get to this because that's the whole process this evening, okay? Now I know... There's things in the past that we, have, we did in conformity the way we like to do things in our town. But also, it's going to slow down the whole process. We have to take this up again another evening. So you're saying you'd like to see this verbiage written in the actual motion? I'd like to know what the actual motion is. This doesn't, this doesn't do it for me, that's all. Maybe it's just me. Maybe everybody else is fine. But to me, we should see what the motion is that we're actually voting. And we don't have that, in my opinion. And no, I'm not looking to say put it off to another night, because I think it's imperative to have this done before you look at the contracts. Uh, just give me a moment to confer with town council for a minute. All right, you have a point of order, Mr. Lurie? Mr. Moderator, I, I have a... Do you have a point of order, I, too? Yes. All right, let me oh, go I'm to sorry. Mr. Delinsky oh, first. Yeah. My apologies. Was I, or am I mistaken that we said all amendments had to be received by the moderator 48 hours in advance of any motion on the, on the floor? Yes. And was this received 48 yes. hours? How come we didn't see it? It was posted on the table <laughs> as soon as I could possibly get it posted on the table. I mean, I'm not going to lie to anybody. It's, no, I'm just saying. I, it's just that I didn't see it. So, okay, maybe I'm just I'm Yeah, wrong. I mean, 48 hours goes back. It could be Saturday or Monday or something. Oh, whatever 48 hours would have been Monday. Yeah, it could have been Monday. Yeah, it's dated the 6th. So that was Monday. But it was received the 6th. Yeah, I make sure that the date that I received is on the 6th. There's no sleight of hand here. I mean, it's just May 6th. You know, uh, let me go to Dave, Mr. Dave Lurie. Please Mr. identify Mattery, yourself. David, David Lurie, Precinct 6. I have total respect for the person before my point of order who made the original point of order. The thing is, is that the vote is simply to say yes or no, including if you like or don't like the way it's presented to us. You could simply say no, I don't like the way it's put in front of us. And then when, they, when somebody in the leadership who says, I can put this together better, they have plenty of time to get you 48 hours of a full written out amended motion then and a reconsideration i changed my mind because now i see it the way i like it and then we vote again if somebody if the body says you know we no can put this, it on the table too it's already on, it's on the table to be able to vote up yeah. or down including the way it's presented to us just right. like every other article 
All right. Thank you, Mr. Lurie. Mr. Cohen, do you have a point of order? Yes. I'm sorry. Do I'm sorry, what? Is she first? Do you have a point of order? Um, what does that mean? I'm the third person? No, no. Uh, use the, if you can point oh, the, I'm short. Pull so down the, I know. I apologize for the, these, the height of these microphones. Yeah. Point of order means you have something that takes priority over anybody's pro or con debate or technical questions. I, well, I, I guess I'm just confused, but I think it, I'm, Use your microphone. Sorry, there. sorry. I can talk loud without it. Um, my perception is that um, police Please and identify fire, yourself for us. I'm oh, sorry. Sorry about that. Uh, first time speaking <laughs> yesterday, I think. Uh, Janet Weinstein, Precinct 6. I'm a town rep um, in that district. Um, I guess my confusion is, is that um, policemen and fire departments, perhaps other ones, are civil servants. So I'm not sure why this is here, why they're being removed from civil service. I, I understand that there's an exception because of time. I understand the fire part. So if someone can just explain to me why it's even happening. Is that a question or a statement? I don't know. Got to wait a, a second for this. No, it's, it's a, a fair question. I'd say that probably. Because yeah. I've only been a town rep. It's confusion and you need some clarity here. Okay, I'm going to ask town council to try to explain that. So um, I think what you're referring to is civil servants, right? So we're all civil servants, but there is a civil service commission, right? And what the civil service um, law means is that a town can opt into that law. And that happened just after the turn of the century, okay? Stoughton opted into that law. And what that law did was it created a process for hiring police and promoting police officers. Does that include a civil service examination? Including a okay. civil service examination. So they won't have to take it, you're saying. Well, I don't want to get into the details right. yet. Right, so that's all. I, okay. I, I just that's it. Understand. That's it. So instead of that process, you'll follow a different process going forward. And that's the goal of this. Um, this decision this evening, and, and Chief McNamara is here to speak on it as to the policy reasons why the town is looking to do this. Okay, so she'll be explaining it. Thank yes. You. Okay, thank you, Town Council. Thank you, Ms. Weinstein. All right, Bob Cohen, you have a point of order? Yes. Is, what's the vote? Is it a two third or majority? Majority. Simple majority. Thank you. So point please of identify order. yourself. Juan Fox, Precinct 1, point of order. Right, it's not a very uh, long um, article as articles go. Why don't we just change it now on the fly, because we know the specific things that need to be removed, have council bless it, and then we vote on that. We've done that before on other, uh, other articles in the past. So why don't we do that, and then it'll st stop a lot of uh, hate and discontent on this right now. Okay. Good point, Mr. Juan Fox, Precinct 1. We appreciate your input. Um, do we have one more point of order? Okay, thank you. I'm going to ask town council to kind of insert that somewhere. So, but we did accept the amended motion, but we have not voted on it yet. Okay, so let's take a moment. Let me give town council a moment to uh, make an adjustment here. Okay, are we ready to do this? Yeah. Okay, Mr. This is Mr. KB. Please identify yourself again to the body, please. Steve, are you able to hear me? Steve KB, Precinct Eight, also the select board chair. So I move to see, to see if the town will vote to rescind the affirmative vote pursuant to Article Seven 
of the June 4th, 1906 town meeting by which the town accepted chapter 31, section 48 of the general laws and amendments there, thereof, civil service, for its regular and permanent members of the Stoughton Police Department uh, or take any other action thereto related. And further, to see if the town will vote to authorize the select board to submit a proposed special act to the general court of the Commonwealth as follows. Special act, an act authorizing the town of Stoughton to exempt all Stoughton police officers at all ranks from civil service. But, uh, sorry, be it enacted by the Senate and House of Representatives in general court assembled and by the authority of the same as follows. Section one, notwithstanding any general or special law to the contrary, all the positions of all police officers uh, in all ranks in the police of the town of Stoughton, excluding the chief of police previously exempt through the Massachusetts Act of 1978, chapter 474, chapter 30 shall be exempt from chapter 31 of the general laws. Second. I've got a little bit more. We're not done yet. <laughs> Section two. Uh, Section one of this act shall not in, in impair the current civil service status of any person holding a position as a sworn member of the police department of the town of Stoughton on the effective day of this act and only shall be applied to appoint it uh, and appointments and promotions respectively as of the date of the annual town meeting vote uh, of May 8th, 2024. Section three, this act shall take effect upon passage. Was that Cynthia Walsh? Second in that, thank you. From Precinct 3, right? All right, Cynthia Walsh second in that for Precinct 3. All right. Now, we're going to ask for the presentation. Everybody clear on that now? That little clearer for everybody? All right. So they, they left out any anything here about the town manager being able to just effectuate the change? That's now gone? On the part of the amended motion there was uh, something about the town manager changing the legislation on the original amended motion that, that was the motion okay that was in there I didn't strike that part Mr. Anzavino well it wasn't just read as far as what the new motion was that's why I'm asking if it's now gone or did we not see the full motion that's why it's so much easier just to type it so we can actually see it and we should have had it in our hands all right. Which book? Volume two? Volume one. Take your time. Hold on. Well, no, I, point of interest. That might be something new for me, but. He's going on vacation. <laughs> look, I'm on, look, I think it was read into the record. You know, if you have a chance to either vote it up or vote it down, but we're going to hear the presentation. We're going to move forward. All right, in the future, uh, just the amended motion. You want to explain that? I'm going to have town council just make a reasoning on that. So I think you may want to just listen to the police chief um, on her presentation as to the policy reasons why the town would like to leave civil service for the police department um, because that may influence your decision on whether to vote it up or down. But, but let me ask you one, one other question. Yeah. 
But we have an amended motion, right? It, it will end up being so you'll you'll decide whether or not to accept this amendment, and then you'll vote that motion as amended. And I think it probably makes sense to just hear the reasons why, because then you can take the votes lickety split. You have to use the microphone, please. Identify yourself. Apologize for all this little hesitation and confusion, but we're straightening out the process a little bit. Is this on? Yeah. Yes. Uh, Mark Zemanian, Precinct 1 for the record. Typically, we vote whether or not to accept the amended motion. Mr. Cavey just read the amended motion. That is not the motion that's in the book. We then vote whether or not we want to accept the article through the motion. Okay. Why don't we do that then? Because I like to kind of, if it's cleaner for everybody, understandable, let's vote to accept the amended motion that was read. Okay, everybody clear on that? So I got to get something on the screen as the amended motion. Is this acceptable? Yeah. Right. Yes. Okay, per town council, it's, it's in proper form. So this is, I'm going to ask you the vote that's on the screen. And well, we had, this is, Look, in, in the sake of time, I got, and, and so people will get on the same page. If you want to have a little discussion on the amended motion, we can do that right now before we, well, we should have the presentation first. That's what, what before we vote. Yes. We always have a presentation before we vote. On the, okay, so let's have a look. Well, let's just do this. Let's go back. It's, even the moderator gets confused a little bit. This is why the moderator usually requires the full motion to be presented that's going to be amended. So you don't have this issue. Because what okay, was let's, read let's, does not agree okay. with what's up on the screen. All right, the moderator is going to make a quick decision. We're going to hear the presentation, okay? Uh, Chief McNamara, please proceed with your presentation. All right. Good evening, all. Chief McNamara from the Police Department. Thank you all for my attention through you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, as you heard briefly, the civil service started in 1884. The town of Stoughton entered civil service process for hiring in 1906. That is a long time ago, and a lot of things have changed in society, and there are a number of reasons that I will explain why it is best for our police department to leave the civil service hiring process. About two months ago, I spoke to a young man who wanted to be hired by the town of Stoughton, and because he missed the deadline for hiring for the exam, for the civil service exam, he was not able to take an ex the exam. He is now in the process of being hired by a community in Norfolk County because they are not in civil service. Majority of the civil service communities in Norfolk County are no longer in civil service because of the cumbersome way it is. Thus, I, I am adamant that we need to leave civil service in order to recruit new officers to our profession that is already having a difficult time recruiting people. The process to get hired takes months in the civil service process now. It is a multiple choice exam. If you miss the deadline for the exam, for a police officer position, you wait 12 months before the next exam. In a community that is not civil service, they can go and get hired whenever they want to. And they can go to you, and those communities use other companies that run exams multiple times in the course of a month for police officer positions. Police officer positions have become highly competitive in the Commonwealth because many, many communities have already left civil service. I could list the names of, of them, but we have time restraints for this evening. 
So the civil service test that is a multiple choice, it, it is restrictive and cumbersome. After the test is taken, it takes up to two and a half months to get a certified list from civil service that will ultimately give the names of specific candidates that signed up for the test that are eligible for the town of Stoughton to hire. When that list comes out and I ask for one, two, four positions, depending on how many vacancies I have, they will give me a mathematical number of how many names come, get sent to the Stoughton Police Department. Last year, in 2023, there were only 22 candidates that passed the civil service exam interested in becoming a police officer for the town of Stoughton. Of those 22, I had 10 vacancies. I found seven potential candidates. Six of them are in the academy. That is not great numbers when, it, when you look at it. When we get the candidates and they sign up and they're interested, we still do a background investigation. That's going to continue with the new process if we leave civil service. We still will require a medical examination, the same as we do right now. We have set up policies and procedures in place that was negotiated with both bargaining units for promotions as well as new candidates already in order for us to hire new officers and, and for our promotional process. This has already been negotiated. We are having a difficult enough time hiring police officers in the climate that we're in as, as we are right now. We need the assistance to leave civil service in order to have any competitive advantage when we're looking at new candidates. A multiple choice qu question exam is only looking at one aspect of a quality candidate. And we need to look at all qualities that people bring to this job because they are a makeup of our community. So a test taker is not the only aspect that we want to look at when we're hiring someone. So I ask you, please, to consider this. This will help our police department. It will help the candidates that we recruit as new officers, and it will help retain the officers that we currently have right now. Thank you very much, Chief. Okay, at this point in time, I will allow questions, technical questions. And just to remind everybody, we need, we're going to have to take two votes on this issue. Okay, if you have questions, please rise to the microphones. Or you can get in line. There's a lot of people. I'll take privilege since I am the mic person tonight. Uh, you have to please rise and introduce yourself to the body again. Peter Murphy, Precinct 2. What? Yeah, one. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> Question I have is, is uh, Section 3. This act shall take effect upon passage. Doesn't this have to go before the Attorney General to be approved? I'll ask, I'll ask Town Council to answer your question. So that language there is the actual legislation that's before the legislative body at the state. So upon passage is when they approve it. Okay, so this is... This, where it's indented in your book, where it says special act, an act authorizing all the way down to the town, uh, to this shall be affected upon, upon passage. That's how it's going to appear in the acts of 2024, okay? So that's when it becomes effective when the legislature passes it. And this, again, is just a belt and suspenders approach because the way you go into civil service is the way you come out of civil service. I understand that, Pat, my, but my question, to, for clarification of the first question, so if we were to pass this tonight, it would not take effect tomorrow morning. It still has... Correct. That's right. It still gets submitted to the legislature through your legislators, and they present it to that body, and then it becomes effective. Now, there can be the argument that it is effective tonight, and this is just a prophylactic measure, because you're still a town meeting. So although you converted from open to representative, it's still a town meeting form of government. So we will likely submit um, uh, documentation to the Civil Service Commission saying that we've opted out of civil service and then we just have the legislator, le legislature bless it. So it still has to go through legislature? Correct. Okay. Thank you. Okay, I think Mr. Coleman was next. Mis Mr. Moderator, point Mr. of Gito. order. Mr. Gito, please. 
I what precinct are you from, or are you from the precinct board? four? Okay. Um, we have had a brief discussion about why to put this motion on the floor and vote on the motion to have it be the main motion. We should do that because. That's what really needs to happen. If we, have, if we have the discussion of the motion before we put it on the floor as the main motion, then we either have to decide, well, we're not going to have any more discussion about it or go through the whole thing again. I mean, the, the process is basically to take the fire department out of the original motion. That has been done, and people have talked about that. What we should do now is say, yes, we want to accept this motion to then be discussed. Yes. All right. Anybody else? I guess if we can kind of pinpoint the questioning. Anybody have any discussion, questions re remove about regarding about removing the fire department from civil service? Mr. Coleman? Eric Coleman, Precinct 5. If we defeat Taking the, it out. I'm sorry? Taking the fire department out of this motion. Yes. If we defeat this amendment and pass the main motion, would that make the fire department go into, uh, leave civil service. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll refer to, defer to the town council. Yes, that would happen. Both departments okay. would leave civil service um, following legislative approval. And question two, considering that, could we hear from the uh, fire chief as to what uh, he, if he wants to be in this, or he does not want to be in civil service? Thank you. <laughs> Chief Carroll. Good evening, Chief Carroll. Um, no, we absolutely do right now. They, uh, they just, they actually, I believe they ran out of time with the negotiation aspect to it with the fire union. Uh, I can speak a little bit to the fact that how civil service and its process slows down, uh, not, only, not only our hiring process, um, I believe that it really slows down uh, our ability to capture the best. And uh, just a brief, what has always frustrated me about the, the process is uh, more along the lines of promotional exams. Promotional exams are done through civil service exams. Stoughton needs four, let's see, let's say there's a deputy's exam being uh, um, issued in October for uh, a deputy chief's position. I need four captains to sign up for that exam, to take the exam. And that's, and that's law, that's legislative. I actually asked for it to be changed. Same as Boston, who has 56 captains, only needs four. Now, it Stoughton only has six captains, so I need four of them to commit to the exam um, to even have the exam. If I don't have four sign up, they have to wait another year to take the exam. It slows down the whole process. We may have open positions we cannot fill. It might have to be an acting out of grade position. So civil service probably had its place back in the day. Remember 1906, we still had uh, children working in mines, right? I mean, that's how antiquated it is. Uh, I can't put a lot of people can't transfer over. People are already paramedics and uh, already fire one. It's got titles. Already fire one, fire two. We can put them right on. Yeah. 
So the short answer is yes, I'm in favor of this. I think, uh, like I said, labor laws have changed. I believe that um, we are putting together a great process for not only promotions but hiring. That will be part of the, that is part of this negotiations. Uh, I, I believe it will be best for, for the town of Stoughton. Um, and, and obviously, I, I think moving forward, it's, you know, we have, we have a good process, working staff, HR, and, and we can, and I think the union wants to. It's just a matter of figuring out the process in which promotions and hiring is done. So short answer, yes. Okay, thank you very much. All right, I don't want to kind of keep going down this road, but. I actually have a technical question. Mr. Okay. Moderator, and it's specifically about what we Please heard. identify yourself, please. Mark Zemanian, Precinct 1. Um, I listened to the standing committee Sorry. meetings. I heard what Chief Officer. Carroll had to Thank say you. there. Okay. It's clear he would like to be out. But if we vote the original motion, does that conflict legally with this article? I mean, he's... We have an amended motion on the floor, which we haven't voted on yet. Well, we, we can get to and that. I understand. Well, let me, let me, we're it's only part, talking about the amended motion right now. Then why did we hear from Chief Carroll, with all due respect? Because there was a question up here regarding... Uh, but it's confusing the matter. Of course. We need right. to vote on the amended motion, right, and then we, can, we okay. can vote on the presentation. Let's, okay, let's proceed to that. You have a point of order? If there's no yes. point of orders... Well, yeah, I mean, I'm a little... Confused. It's John Rock, okay, Precinct on, 3. Wait, wait a minute. I have a, do you have a point of order back there? No, it's not a point of order. You have a point Just of order? Yeah. On? So this is um, John Rock, Precinct 3, for the, for the fire chief. Um, hi, both of you. Thanks for what you do. Um, so how would you like us to vote on this? I mean, should we vote down the amended uh, motion because you... You want the department to leave the civil service? Or, or, or tell me the, the so, reason. So to me, I came here with the, with the thought of, you know, that we were going to move forward. Obviously, negotiations, and they're still in negotiations. So to me, the police are set, ready to go. I believe we will have our time. I, I believe that the, you know, the union has to work and, and figure out a lot of this is held up in the process and understanding how are we going to promote from you know moving forward uh, there are some as uh, Chief McNamara pointed out there are departments Franklin has an excellent process in which they're going to promote it's just working through the weeds I think we're going to get there I don't think we should hold up the police you know waiting for us we're fine we're moving forward um, and we will go in the way in which we have been hiring. Yes, it takes longer. Yes, it might be frustrating. But I'm used to it, and I don't mind the work. The, the thing is, is I don't think we should hold up the police on this. We will be in front of you again, I'm sure. So you, you have to work through the process and work with the union and come up with a, a system of promotions, et cetera? Right. I, and I believe okay. it has to be agreed upon. I, I, I believe... Uh, the attorney, town's attorney, and, and Mr. Coulter are working with the union, um, but I don't think we should hold up the PD. Okay, thank, thank you that for your seems, question, Mr. Roth. Thank you. That seems reasonable. Yep. Thank you. Okay, uh, I'm going to ask Mr. Coulter a point of personal privilege. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I agree with everything both chiefs have said. Perhaps I could bring just a little bit of clarity to this uh, from the perspective of, of a former state legislator. Um, 50% of the legislation we did for the 13 years I was in the House was rewriting old, outdated, antiquated laws because they were 100 years old and they no longer fit our society. And I respond to that question in a second, but I first want to say that the things people are most concerned about when their communities leave civil service, what happens to the protections of the employees, and what happens to the protection of the town to protect them from nepotism, to protect them from a number of different things. In the last 120 so or, or odd years, laws have been put on the books that protect labor unions. Laws have been put on to protect 
that protect citizens from nepotism. Labor laws and municipal laws provide all of the protections now, as well as collective bargaining agreements, that were once found in the civil service law of 1906. All that law is doing for Stoughton right now is putting the town of Stoughton in great danger. We have been understaffed well below safe staffing levels in the Stoughton PD for maybe as long as a decade. When you've got people working double overtimes because we don't have the people to fill those spots, you've got tired police officers on the job. It's dangerous. And people, young people in particular, don't want to work those doubles. So you may have shifts that aren't filled at all as you sleep at night thinking you've got coverage. So this is doing away with an outdated, obsolete law that people in the uh, citizens of the 351 cities and towns of Massachusetts are leaving in droves. And all of the protections for the citizens and for the patrolmen and police officers that are working are contained within the CBAs that you're going to talk about later. So I don't, you've got all the right to debate this all night. There are some tough issues before us that require a lengthy debate. I, I, I just implore you. If you want to have a safe police department, then support this vote and let us move forward in recruiting people to the Stoughton PD to keep you safe. It's really that simple. It's really that very simple in terms of the fire department and the labor contract. Uh, we're working in good faith and the fire union is working in good faith with us to reach an agreement. You could vote this tonight for the fire department. It would be bad faith. Although we don't need the fire department's concurrence and agreement, we promise we'd work in good faith in negotiating the details of that agreement. So I would suggest we not include the fire department, although you could. I would suggest you not include it. Vote on the amended motion, uh, or I ask that you vote on the amended motion, and let us get down to fixing and reforming a police department that right now we have no control over because of civil service laws. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you, Mr. Calter. Here's, here's the moderator's rule on next special town meeting or next year's. When we have these amended motions, I want the entire motion rewritten to replace the one in the book. If the words are going to be struck out, rewrite the whole motion. That way it's as clear when we put it up as the amended motion. Otherwise, I'm not going to accept it. Let the town meeting reps argue it. Okay, hang on. Uh, Diane, I just don't want to go down, keep going down. We have to vote on the amended motion. Then we can open it up for questions. Well, John, I'm not going to debate with you, okay? I'm just not going to do it. I appreciate, I recognize you as a FinCom ch vice chair, but I just don't want to keep going if the amended motion doesn't pass. You know, it goes back and forth. We do know what the motion is. Diane, did you want to have a yes, question? Yes, Diane Dolan, Precinct 7. Uh, I think what our town manager just said really confused me a little bit. I'm wondering now if we take the fire department out of this article, number one, I did not hear that the town manager would have the ability to put them back into the article, which was something that Mr. Anzavino brought up. And number two, if that is the case and we just vote on the police, do we have to ha now have another article at another town meeting that takes the fire department out, uh, or puts the fire department out of civil service? I'll ask town council to clarify that. The expectation is that we come back in the fall with the right. similar type of article for this body to consider to remove fire the, the fire department from civil service. We just did not finish negotiations with the fire department um, in enough time to get to the town meeting. So um, we expect something to come back in the fall. You have to, the microphone's not on, or it's not working. Don't, please don't turn them off, whoever they go off. Thanks, Peter. Thanks, Peter. I, I think that's my whole point. I yeah. don't want the fire department to have to wait if they pass their collective bargaining next week. This means they have to wait a whole entire 
Well, Who knows, six months here? Diane, my understanding of what the town council has said, the negotiations, she said this minutes ago, 10 minutes ago, some negotiations with the fire department have not been concluded. Right, but there so is there is a portion in their collective bargaining that says they want to be removed from civil service. But the negotiations with collective bargaining units in the fire department has not been... So have now we'll have agreement. to come back with a new article that says they yes. have to be put... Okay, that is correct. that's my point. So I am against this amendment. Well, we're not at that... Okay. Mr. Meyer... Mr. Scardino, do you have a technical question? Or? Yes, uh, thank you, Joe Scardino, Precinct 1. Based on the last speaker's question or comment, um, I'd like to ask through you, Mr. Moderator, to town council, can we, um, I, I would like to have this considered on an omnibus basis. On a what Why, basis? What an basis? omnibus, in other words, not another town meeting. Can we put language in there contingent upon a satisfactory completion of collective bargaining with the fire department, they'd be removed. Mr. Moderator. So uh, I hope I'm going to answer your question. Let me give it a shot. So what the town manager was referring to is um, the fact that this body absolutely has authority to press this legislation forward unamended, right? You have the authority. It's a... Uh, it's a legislative function to decide whether or not to go into or come out of civil service. It's actually not um, a decision that the union can prevent you from making. So theoretically, you could do it tonight, or you can do it in the fall, or you can do it 10 years from now. Um, it, what our obligation under the law is is to impact bargain. So bargain the impacts of the decision that we make, as opposed to there are certain things that you have to decisional bargain, meaning the union can say, no, you can't make that decision. Here they can't say that. Um, so you could say, um, make that amendment to the amended motion, or, or make that amendment to the main motion, but it would be redundant because that is our obligation under the law, regardless to impact bargain with the union. Does that answer? And I can't see you, so. Uh, 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 oh, there you are. Yeah. Okay, I see you. Um, my, my concern here, and I think it's the manager's concern as well, is obviously we don't want to start a, a labor grievance over this. That's right. And so my language is specifically suggested so that it's contingent upon the satisfactory resolution of negotiations with the fire department so it would work with an automatic switch at some point between now and let's say three months that process completed the fire department and the police department can go into the open market and um, begin hiring people under the new modern way of doing it instead of the 19 or 18 hundreds that's my suggestion I think that I thank the speaker for, for prompting me to think in that direction because I think that that's the way to approach this, to uh, put that contingency into it. Mr. Moderator. Uh, Mr. Carlter, go ahead. I, I seldom do this, uh, and I'd like to do it, and, and if it sounds flippant, please forgive me. I don't mean it that way. I ask that you trust the three negotiators in the room, our town council, myself, and Deanna, our Director of Human Resources. We've not had a labor grievance or a lawsuit or an arbitration in a year and a half. And the reason we don't is because we deal in good faith. We always deal in good faith. These firemen have earned our respect and we have earned their trust. If we were to turn them in, uh, vote to put them into civil service this evening, that trust would be gone. It puts an unfair thumb on the scale. It gives one party leverage in some areas and the other party leverage in other areas. That is not good faith bargaining. They want to join civil service, the firemen. We have a lot of details to work out. To take this vote now can be used in a nefarious way to gain an unfair advantage on both sides. So I, I, I wouldn't pretend to preach on bargaining but I ask you to trust us that, particularly under the leadership of Kate Federoff, 
Uh, we've never had a grievance, and we don't want one here on this one. So we just ask that you vote for the police to uh, leave civil service. We've got a complete agreement with the police unions. We will reach a complete agreement with the fire unions, and they're not going to lose any benefits because it takes until the fall town meeting. We're having a fall town meeting anyway. So I'd ask that you vote uh, for the amended motion to uh, support entering, uh, exiting civil service for the police department. Thank you. Okay. Thank so you, Mr. Carlton. Okay, you, Mr. Getting... Moderator, to the to the Tom wait a minute, wait a minute. We're not going back and forth, Mr. Sky. There, I appreciate it. You had your two questions, two statements. Did you have one more thing? I'm, I'm not going to take any more after you, sir. James, uh, you, uh, you have to use the, the microphone's not working. I'm sorry, James Rush, Precinct 4. I'm a 29 year member of the fire department in Stoughton. Uh, Mr. Coulter stole my thunder. Please vote the amended motion. The police want out, but right now we are still negotiating. The fire department wants to stay in civil service for right now. I'm sure we'll be here in the fall. This meeting could go on in the fall, the way things are going. <laughs> so please, I'm not, I'm not trying to be funny, but you make it, everyone's making this very complicated. The fire department wants to stay in civil service. We're all negotiating in good faith. Thank you. All right. All right, to make things at this point to go forward, we're going to vote the amended motion, and then we can still debate it if you want, okay? Otherwise, we're just wasting our time going around and around here. If you, all right, all right, yeah, okay. Let's do it by voice vote. We'll try by voice vote. That fair with town council by voice vote. This is on the amended motion. Just a motion to amend, as Mr. Kavey read it to everybody. To accept the amended motion. Then it becomes the main motion as amended. Just remember those terms. We'll explain that again. This is the vote, first vote on to accept the amended motion as read by Mr. Steve Kavey. By voice vote, all those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? I think it passes, okay? Now, this won't happen again. I mean, we're gonna make sure motions are written out in detail, otherwise I won't accept it. We'll fight it on the floor if we have to, but this is ridiculous, okay? They have to be done a different way, and we'll, we'll get to that. Okay, now we're gonna get to, since we, this will be, now it's called the main motion as amended. Okay, unfortunately, we can't put it up on the screen because it wasn't all put together beforehand. All right? So now at this point, we're going to have technical questions. Two questions per person. I'll, I'll go to Johnny Zavino first because... Uh, Thank you. Johnny Zavino, Precinct 4. And I'm going to ask the question because Town Council, through you, Mr. Moderator, Town Council had said what you had up there was acceptable. The motion that was presented here had the line in here saying um, ex accepting the fire department and authorizing the town manager to amend such legislation effectuating the same. That was not read by Mr. Cavey for the amended motion. So, and I'll, just as a reminder, we've had town council tell us before, maybe not this, but we've had town council tell us it's not what they tell you. I got to go by what's in writing. That's why they actually have motions written so you know what you're voting. So that's my technical question. If the town manager is allowed or authorized to amend the legislation, effect, effectuating that the same, I want to know what exactly that means, if it's in there. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Intervino. All right. Thank you. Well, thank you. All right. What if we? What if I propose this? What if we get a copy of Mr. Cave, Mr. Steve Cavey's motion while we're discussing this and hand it out to everybody? That way, we have something in writing. Would that be fair to everybody? It, it was. Is it, well, not the one he read. As far as I'm concerned. Not it. I, okay. I just well, want to. I could send the word document to Sam if she wants to put it up okay. on the screen. All right. Let me. Let me point, proceed. Point of order. 
It seems pretty clear to everybody what we're doing. Can we just get on with it? Wait a minute. Wait. Clear, first, identify yourself, please. Brian Holmes, Precinct 3. Police are leaving civil service. Fire is not. Thank we're voting you. on it. Can yep. we just get on with it? Right. Well, let's have some technical questions for us. Okay? I got some of them, too. All right. <laughs> we'll get to you. All right. I'm, we're going to get moving forward. Now, John, to answer your question, it was read by Mr. Cavey. That's right. And we just can't put it up on the screen. It's not available for the screen. That I know particular you said line, line was not read, and it's not in the motion that's in the book. All right, let me see get one clarification from town council. Then I want to go to the technical questions. That is a technical question. Just stand by for one moment while you consult with Tony. I'm telling you, well, it's going to be stiffer by the time this goes. I know. Hold on, everybody. Hold on. Please don't leave the building. If you need to use the restrooms, that's, that's fine. We're all going to leave. bring a party. Okay. John, can you bring your motion over that you have to town council so she, so she can look at it? That you're alluding to. Well, you're asking about some words that about regarding town manager and the legislation. All right. In the meantime, we're going to start hearing some technical questions. All right, let's proceed. Who's up first? Uh, Mr. Zemanian, please identify yourself and ask your questions. Thank you. Uh, Mark Zemanian, Precinct 1, through you to the police chief. Um, thank you, Chief McNamara, for bringing this to us and explaining it clearly. Just a quick technical question. Within the South Shore, how many towns are out of civil service that you're competing against? So out of, out of Norfolk County, the good majority are out. So Norwood is out of civil service, Westwood. Um, Franklin, the process is happening, uh, about to happen in other communities close by. So there are more towns that are leaving just in Norfolk County than are staying. So you're, and they're in the same process as we are in. Okay, so there's, you're actually starting to fight a battle where the majority of towns are out and you're struggling to hire. Correct. Thank you. Jim, go ahead, please, please identify yourself. Jim Gehring, Precinct 6. Uh, the amended motion that were out, was up there on the screen said, uh, in accordance with the uh, amended motion as printed in the warrant. It's not printed in the warrant. The, okay, the amended motion was on the virtual table, the but, language. But I know, it's the amendment to the motion. Okay, it didn't have the complete motion, it just didn't and making those changes within the main motion. I got it. All it's doing is excluding the fire department. That's all it's doing. I, well, yeah, Nothing it's, else is not it's, making any hocus pocus it's, or anything. It's getting just, rid of the, the test for the uh, uh, civil service test, essentially. Uh, I, grew, I grew up the civil service test, and it was to stop people from, from jumping over other people who had had a better score on the test. Well, I, we seem to be taking that out. Uh, our town well, manager, ask, ask your question, you know. Just, uh, our town manager mentioned that this was uh, what we're doing now. You have to kind of speak into the microphone. I'm not hearing you that well. Uh, our town manager was saying that uh, what this was doing was stop a nepotism. Uh, it seems to me we're in reintroducing it now uh, because uh, we're going to let people jump over other people who might have had a better score in a, in a test. Huh? I, I, I just don't understand this. I'm going to vote against it. Okay, so your question is, Jim, if I can just paraphrase, you're concerned about nepotize, nepotism, where civil service somehow prevented it, and this might allow it back in? Yes. That, okay, can yes, we, let's see correct. if we can get an answer. Who, who would like to answer that? You or me. 
Mr. Moderator, thank you. Sure. The rules are not being thrown out the window that were contained within the civil service law. They're now being addressed through Massachusetts labor laws. Mr. Calter, hang on one second. Could I have silence in the room, please? If you want to have conversations, please take it outside, out in the auditorium. Plenty of, plenty of room outside the auditorium. Thank you all for understanding. Go ahead, Mr. Calter. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. The rules that were in civil service when this body entered civil service in 1906 uh, are still present even after we leave civil service. They're contained in a number of documents, either in labor laws, Massachusetts labor laws, ethic laws that deal with conflict of interest, or even the appearance of conflict of interest, and in most importantly, in the collective bargaining agreements negotiated between the labor body and management. So none of the rules are going away, but we've evolved as a society, and they're in different places. There were no 55-mile-an-hour speed limits in, 2000, in 1906. They exist now. So there are plenty of rules Nobody in place to make sure that we don't have conflict of interest, that we don't have nepotism, that we don't have unfair dealings with regard to promotion. And by the way, the exams that are going to be given to our police department candidates are the same type of exams, perhaps even stricter, than those that are in civil service. No, the, that the, was never stated in this. Uh... Okay. I apologize for that. The advantage is we can act quickly. The way we act in civil service right now, people are getting their pensions by the time we give them a job offer. It's too late. And that's why we're so low on staffing. It's not because people don't want to come to a desirable town like Stoughton. I, I was honored to come here. It's because civil service has more barriers than it's got advantages right now. Okay. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Marjorie. Okay, thank you. All right, who's next? Sandra Souza? Well, who was up first? I mean, excuse me, Mr. Cohn? The moderator's never wrong, okay? I'm sure Mr. Holmes would understand if Sandra Souza goes next. Yeah, go ahead. Sandra Souza, Precinct 1. Um, thank you, Chief, uh, for bringing this to the town. Um, so I, I do happen to be in support of this. Um, and I do know that civil service has a lot of positives, but uh, it is very antiquated. Um, I have a couple of questions, one in terms of costs and one in terms of uh, as Mr. Guerin said, um, hiring preferences and maybe nepotism. I don't know if I would call it nepotism, but in terms of the cost, when a candidate goes to civil service, they pay for their own exam. So if we're taking on the testing portion, um, is that going to be the cost going to be borne by the town or will the candidate have any? Uh, input into paying some of that cost? Through you, Mr. Moderator, the cost sure. will still remain with the candidate. Two companies that I've uh, made contact with and spoken with that run multiple tests per month, it's all on the candidate to take the exam for a new candidate, new hire. Okay, thank you. And then my other question um, revolves around um, hiring preference. So. I know civil service has a very complicated formula, but um, they do have things, for instance, like seniority preference and veteran preference. And supposedly, they keep nepotism out of it. I, I don't know if that's necessarily the case, but uh, will we have any kind of a tool or ranking where there will be still some veteran preference in town or seniority preference for uh, for instance, folks who have, you know, seniority or well, have experience from some other law enforcement type of, you know, I don't know, maybe another community or, say, a college or anything else like that. 
So yes, there will be. Um, if we would rather take a, an already certified post certified police officer if we can get a candidate that's interested in, in coming over from another community that isn't civil service, or if they are civil service and we become non civil service community, we could take someone from another town and we would obviously want to take someone with experience before having to hire someone new and send them to an academy. So we would look at all of that and consider that as part of our hiring process. What about the veteran preference? Will there be any sort of veteran preference for, I know that's a hard thing to, civil service has a different way of measuring that by a point system, but will that be taken into account in any way here in Stone? Certainly, they'll have to pass the written exam for a similar to civil service and then preference after that. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much. Next up, Mr. Holmes, please identify yourself, and thank you for your patience. Oh, no problem at all. I'd like to thank my biggest cheerleader here, Mr. Cohn, <laughs> Brian Holmes, Precinct 3. Uh, through you to the chief, in light of the well-known fact that um, recruitment and retention are two of the biggest challenges nationwide in the business of policing. Does this help you with the first one of recruitment? Chief? Uh, through you, Mr. Honorary. Chief Holmes, yes, it does. Okay, and as an accredited police department on a Massachusetts Police Accreditation Commission, you have to have a policy that meets certain standards for recruitment, uh, retention, exams, promotion, and all that, right? Yes, sir. Thanks, Chief. Thank you both. All right, I believe you're next. Please identify yourself. Paul Bellavo, Precinct 3. I noticed that you have the capability of doing what you just did, and I was asking, was going to ask why we couldn't do something like this, so... It takes technology, a little bit of time. Technology is a, you know, everybody can scan something. My second question is, um, right. could you just explain the uh, qualifications of what you look for when you um, hire a, a young police officer? I know they go through, most of them go through like a college training and et cetera like that. I mean, wow. just explain that a little bit, and I think that would cover everything. Thank you. Okay. Through you, Mr. Moderator, I'll yes. explain currently the way it is right now with civil service is all you need to qualify to take a civil service exam is a GED or high school equivalent and a Massachusetts driver's license. So what we would be looking for is to up those standards higher um, in order to hire quality people with higher education, but it's not a requirement. Um, again, they would first start with taking an exam and have the educational, most of the people that we are looking at that have come in to be hired over the last several years have at least an associate's degree, but many have bachelor's degrees. Um, they have job experience outside of that. Some have corrections experience where they've been a corrections officer or a deputy sheriff or have some field in maybe a probation officer. Um, those are some of the exper experiences that we're looking for, interpersonal skills, or all the things that we're looking for. And good number one is good character. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Over here, go ahead, please identify yourself. Janai Mungelsing, Preci Janai Mungelsing Preci Precinct 7. Um, so if the goal is to uh, expand your candidate pool, uh, where are the job opportunities currently posted? So for all our job opportunities until we request a we have to go through civil service. So when we have a vacancy in the civil service list, we've exhausted the last one. We went through so many candidates that we didn't find enough quality to fill the vacant positions. Now we're waiting for the exam that was done in last month, uh, in late March. We're waiting for that list to be certified currently so we can't hire until that list is certified by civil service. Once that list is, can is certified, then we request names, and they'll give us the formula of how many, name, how many candidates they'll send back to us. So it, we can advertise it, the vacancies, but until we get the list from civil service from that certified list, we can't just pull names. We can't pull names that, aren't, that haven't taken the civil service exam. So would this, so this would change that process, so where would people be, or how would people become aware of the vacancies? So we, we would put them right on the town's website, uh, we would advertise to other police departments. Currently, I receive e email almost every single day from a department that's looking. And there are, there's a, um, an app called Police One that many candidates all across the country go on and look for police, jo police jobs throughout the nation. 
and they apply right from their phone. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Anybody else with technical questions? <coughs> Excuse me. Karen, please come down if you can and identify yourself. We could have had somebody brought the microphone to you, okay. too. Next Karen time. Clip, Precinct 8. Um, I spent 40 years in the civil service system, and one thing I, I was concerned about reading this is that your job qualifications, are they going to be... I was very comfortable for a cop. When you take a test, all the cops met the same standard. Are we going to lower the standard of the... Of the are we going to try and stay nationwide the same standards? I mean, the company you hire, are they going to dummy it up like we did the ASVAB test for the military? No, ma'am. They'll do the exact qualifications that we're looking for. So the, the minimum standards currently right now of civil service is a high school diploma or, or an equivalency and a mass driver's license. That's okay. the standard to take and up the mass citizen, civil service. And a U.S. citizenship, too, right? Yep. Or we're naturalization. Not, we're not going to be dummy up or anything? No. Okay. I just want to make sure we get quality people. That's what you know, we're looking for, too. We want quality people. I'm very comfortable with the civil service test because I know what quality people we're getting because they all take the same test, and maybe our society is not doing it right to generate young people to come into these positions. Maybe we have to look at it a little different. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Okay, pro and con debate. Anybody else? Okay, pro and con. We'll do pro and con. Three minutes each. The timer will go on. We're going to do timing. Okay, Sandra Souza, please identify yourself. Sandra Souza, Precinct 1. As I said a minute ago, I am in support of this. Um, I would just like to say to the chief that maybe um, I've worked in public safety administration, both in policing and in the Department of Corrections, so I really understand the civil service process and how burdensome it can be trying to hire folks and you have to wait for this stupid list to be certified and I was having a conversation earlier with the chief and sometimes you're waiting for this list and they say it's going to be posted and it's not posted for a month or two and you're waiting and waiting and you can't you can't start a, a recruit academy because the list hasn't been posted or you schedule a recruit academy and then the list isn't posted and you have to delay it and there's so many resources that go into coordinating that academy and then it's all for naught. You have to start over. Um, the other thing is that the police standards is managed or maintained by post now because Massachusetts is now a post state. And in terms of what uh, someone else had said about standardization, um, that might be something that maybe the chief could mention because people might not understand what that is. Uh, that does put us on par all across the country and I think it's important to understand that because that's what makes sure that our police officers are qualified and adhering to the same standards as other police officers all across the country. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. All right, next up, uh, Mr. Cohn. Please identify yourself. Bob Cohn, Precinct 5. I agree with taking people out of civil service. At this present time, even with the people in the academy, we're down 16 police officers. Do you know the strain that puts on the people that are working double shifts? Young people, we can't, we, if you notice our department, we have some young, but the overtime is accumulating. Also, She's absolutely right. We have a police chief. We have a town manager. Let's get this thing done, and let's get some people on the street that we can trust and stop wearing out our police department. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Uh, next up is Mr. Ventresco. Then we get to Santi after that. Mr. Uh, Peter Ventresco, Precinct 8. Uh, I was never a fan of... Uh, uh, this particular bill, the Quinn bill, uh, because a lot of people will take the test and they get high in the test scores, but when it comes to running a department or field experience, they, they just don't have it, so they're not the best qualified person for the job. And we have two 
qualified chiefs on the fire department and Chief McNamara on the police department. And if they think this is the best way to go, I'm wholeheartedly behind it because the police department is understaffed and they'll get better candidates from taking people from other departments rather than going through the expense of going through the schools and everything else. And then you still don't know if you're going to get the best quality uh, candidate. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Next up is Cynthia Walsh. It's not working yet. Hang on. It says the green light says on. Okay, try again. Cynthia Walsh. It's working. It's not. Oh, who seconded that? Yes. All right, thank you. There are, just so everybody knows, there are a few more that want to speak, but uh, the question has been moved by Cynthia Walsh and seconded by, who wants to take the, Becca Moxton? Okay, seconded by Becca Moxton for the record. By voice vote, this is to move the question as the main motion as amended. It's on the screen now, and I believe it was handed out. Thank you for handing out. Thank you. We have to speak the hand grab at this point. All right. All right. We'll just, we'll just take a, okay, let's just move the question for us. Let's vote. This is by voice vote to move the question. Everybody good with that? Okay, all, by voice vote. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Hearing crickets, thank you. Unanimous. All right, I'm going to wait till that motion gets handed out. That's also on the screen. I'm going to ask the chief if you would like to do a couple of minutes summary. It's up to you. I just urge you to vote for this. Thank you. Oh, thank you. That's very good. Appreciate that. <laughs> All right, let me just wait, make sure it gets handed out for everybody. We're just about there. Again, reminding you, it's on the screen. This is the main motion as amended. It's a simple majority. Just simple majority. One, two, or three. One yes, two no, three abstention. Everybody got one now? Okay. Did it get up to the people in the back? Yes. Everybody in the back has it because you might not be able to read the screen. Thank you, Joe. <laughs> all right, is everybody comfortable now? Everybody has one in their hand? Anybody that doesn't, get out. You don't have one? Oh, my goodness. Someone, uh, Elliot, do you have one? I mean, you hold it. Somebody, someone has more than one? All right, let's, all right, I think it's safe now that we can vote. Are we ready to vote? Please vote now. Main motion as amended, simple majority. There's a clock up top. It was up at the top this time. All right. Let me just record that. 121 yes. Six no. Zero abstentions. Motion passes. Thank you all for voting. Uh, for me, that was a little painful. I don't know how you guys all felt, but thank you. All right, we're going to move on. We're back to Article 12. All 
Okay, Article 12, Collective Bargaining, bargaining Superior Offices, FY25 through FY27. Could someone give me a page number, please? 42, page 42, Article 12. Okay, um, hang on one second. Okay, I'm gonna ask Mr. Anoki to read the motion, please. That the town vote to implement the terms of collective bargaining agreement between the town of Stoughton and Stoughton Police Superior Officers Union, MCOP, Local 461, Council 93, for three years with the funds needed for the first year, FY25, to be appropriated under Article 15. All right, I need a second. Second. Second by Cynthia Walsh, Precinct 3. All right, Mr. Nokin, can you read the Finance Committee report, please? The Finance Committee voted 12 to 0 to recommend the motion for Article 12 as written in the warrant. All right, thank you very much. There's no other standing committees, so we're going to proceed with the presenter of the article. And I have Tom Calter, Deanne, and technical questions will be answered by Kate. Pardon All me. All right, please proceed. Point of order. Okay, with... Mr. Gito, you have a point of order? I, I thought we were going to uh, talk about 12 and 13 together. Well, first we're going to, uh, uh, we can do that, but let's, uh, yeah, okay. Yes, yeah, thank you for reminding me. So, to simplify this matter so we can move along a little quicker, um, if we introduce 12 and then follow by introducing the article for 13, we can discuss them both at the same time because some of the elements of the contract are the same. They'll be explained as they discuss it. But we will vote them separately, okay? We're gonna vote the contracts separately in separate motions at, at the conclusion of the presentations and the discussion. So, All right. Do we need a motion to suspend the rules to do that? Uh, yeah, we probably should. Motion to suspend the rules to uh, discuss Articles 12 and, what, 13 together and then vote on them separately? Yes. Okay. All right. It's been moved and seconded to suspend. This is just, I believe, a simple majority on suspending the rules. We're going to double check that. It is two-thirds. It is two-thirds. Okay. I didn't know if you were talking to me. All right, so this is to suspend the rules, only to discuss them at the same time. Separate, se vote them separately. Okay. All right, everybody good? By voice vote. Everybody understand the voice vote? To yeah. suspend the rules first. Okay. All those in favor of suspending the rules, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Is there a no? Okay, I didn't hear a no. I thought it maybe just an echo bouncing off the walls. Okay. So I'm going to call that unanimous unless someone objects to that. Okay, we suspend the rules. So can I have a motion for uh, Mr. Nokian? Can you present Article 13 motion? Well, we haven't read it yet. <laughs> but thank you very much. That the town vote to implement the terms of a collective bargaining agreement between the town of Stoughton and the Stoughton Police Patrolman's Union for three years with the funds needed for the first year, FY25, to be appropriated under Article 15. Second. Seconded by, okay, made by, the motion was made by Juan um, Anoki and seconded by John and Zavino already. But thank you for that third second, or second second. Okay, Finance Committee report, please, Mr. Anoki. Finance Committee voted 12 to 0 to recommend the motion for Article 13 as written in the warrant. Okay, Mr. Coulter, uh, if you want to present both of them at the same time, if you're making differences, just yes, please. enunciate the differences too. Yes, sir. Thank uh, you. First, let me uh, begin with an introduction reminding the Tommy members that a year ago at this time, we promised you that we would have MOUs, which are the Memorandum of Understanding, to you by December 31st. And we met that commitment. We negotiated these contracts in good faith beginning last spring, and we delivered them, in the case of the superiors, an hour uh, before the deadline on December 31st. Our negotiating committee, uh, our team is Deanna, Kate, and myself, and at different times we bring the chief in to break some, some gridlock. Uh, these two articles are very similar, as, as you'll see in a few minutes. Um, 
We ask that you keep in mind that there is major reform in these two uh, CBAs, uh, unprecedented reform. We've reorganized the command staff. We've changed job descriptions. We've changed lines of communication. Uh, we've changed staffing levels at different command positions. There was a lot of discussion, a lot of give and take, a lot of negotiation, and we, we got it done. But it wouldn't have been without our partners, uh, the leaders of the Superiors Union, Nate Derby, uh, Lieutenant Nate Derby, and the leader of the Patrolman Union, uh, Detective uh, Dan, 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 Bavar, a dear friend, I forget his last name. Uh, so, Mr. Moderator, through you, uh, I would like to see this presentation time, the balance of it, to the two gentlemen who would like to say a few words to the body. Nate and Of course. Danny. Nate and Danny, please. If you'd like to proceed over to the microphone and then introduce yourself to the body, please. Thank you. Uh, good evening. My name is uh, Nate Derby. As the town manager indicated, I'm a lieutenant with the uh, Stoughton Police Department. Uh, but why I'm here tonight, I am the president of the Stoughton Superior Officers Union. The uh, Stoughton Superior Officers Union represents the sergeants and lieutenants of the uh, Stoughton Police Department. Um, I'm here along with my colleague Dan Barber uh, and the Patrolman's Union to uh, present a joint statement to you as to why we believe these contracts are in the best interest of the uh, police department, the employees that work there, and the town of Stoughton at large. So I'm going to turn it over to my colleague and let him introduce himself. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator, for allowing us the privilege of being here tonight, and thank you to the meeting, uh, the members of town meeting that are also taking the time to allow us to speak to them. Uh, again, my name is Danny Barber. I'm here with my colleague, Nate Derby. Together, we are the presidents of the police patrolmen in the Superior Officers' Unions. Uh, we felt compelled to be here tonight uh, due to an unfortunate email and an amendment that will probably be spoken about briefly, um, urging members of town meeting to not vote yes on Articles 12 and 13 and to adopt an amendment which would reduce the police budget by $250,000, specifically related to police salaries. Um, we felt compelled to be here tonight to speak about that because we want to talk to you about how important these contracts are and how important we believe that these contracts are to the future of the department and explain why these contracts are in the best interest of the town as proposed in Articles 12 and 13 before you now. So the education incentive that is proposed in the contracts that you're voting on are not the result of some haphazard or negligent process. This issue was actually recommended by both the town and the unions in a moment of bilateral agreement. The agreement was the product of thoughtful and diligent research which identified Stoughton as an outlier by not offering an educational incentive equal to the former Quinn Bill. Stoughton is not, or excuse me, Stoughton is the only of our surrounding communities and comparable communities that does not currently or in the next contract cycle offer a full educational incentive. This is not a strong position for us. Hiring and retaining as an agency that pays 25% less than comparable departments is clearly not sustainable. Contrary to what you might have read in an email, policing is empirically facing a recruitment and retention crisis, and Stoughton is not immune from this. The landscape of policing has changed dramatically in the last decade such that there are no longer 20 to 30 qualified candidates competing for every vacancy that we have in our department. Job openings statewide are so numerous that in the last five months, five Stoughton Patrol officers received employment offers from other agencies, all of which offer the same educational incentive that some members have urged you to reject here in Stoughton tonight. The only thing that is keeping these officers from leaving is the educational incentive that is promised in these contracts in Articles 12 and 13. In the last eight years, Stoughton has failed to attract a single officer to transfer to our agency as a lateral transfer. This is a direct result of not offering an educational incentive, which is the industry standard. The email indicated that recruitment is not really a problem facing Stoughton, as evidenced by the fact that we recently hired six new recruits. And this is simply untrue. The six new recruits do not even fill our current vacancies, let alone our known retirements, and promotions that we expect within the next year. Additionally, without the mechanisms our new contracts in Articles 12 and 13 have in place 
to ensure these six recruits actually stay in the town of Stoughton, each recruit will have the ability to seek employment elsewhere on the day that they graduate, which will cost Stoughton the tens of thousands of dollars they've invested in the recruits' training and equipment. This is not just a hypothetical, but a very realistic scenario, given that most departments offer a full educational incentive that Stoughton currently does not, and some departments are offering sign-on bonuses as high as $7,500. Rejecting these contracts to save the money allocated for the educational incentives, which FINCOM, the select board, the town manager have all agreed is within the budget and the strategic plan for the town, is the definition of saving a nickel today to cost yourself a dollar tomorrow. It's unclear why anybody would want to advocate for a strategy that disincentivizes well-educated and quality candidates from seeking employment as a police officer in the town of Stoughton, but that is what you've been told is in the best interest of the town if you choose to reject Articles 12 and 13, as proposed. We ask you all to think about that carefully and ask if it makes sense to you. Is there any profession, especially one as important as policing, that is well served by discouraging well-educated people to apply? We sincerely appreciate the leadership that the Select Board, Town Manager Coulter, Town Council Attorney Kate Federoff, and HR Director Deanna Chatsko, as well as the members of the, the town's finance committee have shown by approving our contracts and by encouraging town meetings to ratify them as well. They have all done the research and they have all come to the same conclusion. Funding the educational incentives and the police contracts in it is an investment in this town that is necessary to ensure we can continue to rebuild the department and make Stoughton a safe and desirable community in which to live and work. We are asking our town meeting representatives to show that same leadership and recognize the importance of ratifying the police contracts as proposed in Articles 12 and 13. I thank you all for your time and allowing us the privilege of speaking to you about this issue. Thank you. Okay, thank you both very much for that discussion. Okay, uh, just so everybody can see, Attorney Keith Federoff is joining Police Chief Donna McMarrow to answer any questions. Now at the uh, period of technical questions. Are we done with the presentation, Chief? Are we done with, did you want to say anything else with your presentation? I think Detective Bar Barter, he summed it up quite well. Okay, thank you. And I support his letter and his recommendation as well. Okay, thank you. All right, now with technical questions. Okay, I, Lou, did you have a technical question? Okay. First, uh, Lou Gito, please identify yourself. Your microphone's not working. There it is. Uh, Lou Gito, Precinct 4. Um, would you just run over the, uh, uh, Attorney Federer, the, uh, the percentage increases for each of the... Uh, And just a reminder from the moderator, these are going to be discussed together. So your questions could be, well, they're going to be voted separate at the end. So if you want, your technical questions can go back and forth on either so, one. So, um, sure. Do you mean the cost of living? Which percentages do you mean, Mr. Gito? The, uh, wage percentages the way so the cola the cost of living increases are consistent with the um, other unions that we settled with at two two and two so two percent in year one two percent in year two two percent in year three then there are additional percentages you want me to run through them all I want you to do them all okay I'll hit I'll and, hit them and, all rather than go back and forth just, just give a total Please, please total them when you finish for each of the... I'm not sure if I can do the math, but I, someone I, else, I'm, I'm going to give you the percentages sure you can and you can you do them before. in the head. So it's a 2%, 2%, 2% COLA. It's a half a percent, half a percent, 1% for a market rate adjustment to reflect um, uh, comps for among comparable communities. Um, for patrol, here I'm going to draw a distinction between patrol and superior officers. Um, we were required to bargain uh, when we regionalized 911. 
the patrol officers lose some bargained unit work. So that work they sometimes filled in for the dispatchers and sat at the desk and did dispatcher duties. So as a consequence, they were losing work as a direct result of the regionalization. So they received a 1% uh, increase. Both units received, uh, we were able to successfully um, negotiate body cams and a body cam policy that worked for both sides. Body cams are something that um, are becoming more of the norm in um, the state, whereas uh, no, no departments had them before. They allow us to effectively evaluate our officers' response and ensure that they're done in compliance with policy, um, while also maintaining protection for the officers so they have evidence to show they've done things correctly. So for those, we've given a 2% increase. Um, for, uh, let me see, um, and then the other major uh, financial component is the change to education, which you heard Detective Barber discuss, um, and that brings all officers under the percentage scheme for receiving payments for degrees that are held. So the associate's degree is 10%, the bachelor's degree is 20%, the master's degree is 25%. Now in the town of Stoughton, um, so let me give you a little bit of history on education incentives. So it, it, in 2000, no, in, when did, when did Quinn go into effect? It, sometime in the, in the 80s or 90s, the legislature wanted to encourage um, the education of its officers. So they adopted what was called, the, or they passed what's called the Quinn Bill. And that's what Mr. Gito is referring to. So the Quinn Bill incentivizes folks to have education. And the way it worked was the state reimbursed the town for half of the payments um, of that education stipend, for lack of a better word. And um, then the state, as is not so unusual, um, rescinded their decision to reimburse towns, and towns were left with the bill. And so the many towns, including Stoughton, worked to eliminate that benefit for officers. So what the result was is some officers were grandfathered in and received the full benefit, while other officers going forward received a lesser benefit. And in Stoughton, what happened is we made it a flat fee rather than a, than a percentage, and then slowly that flat fee was incrementally increased because of the disparity in officers and because we saw the market trend across other departments. Um, and what this does, this change in education, is it puts all officers on the same footing. So if I were hired in 1982 when I have a master's, I get the same benefit as if I were hired in 2023. Both, both persons holding the same degree and getting the same pay for it. And it is consistent with um, other communities who have recognized the benefit of more educated officers, including dealing with post-its, one of those things that they look at to see when you're defending lawsuits, for example, one of the things you look at is training, quality, experience, all of those things to, to evaluate whether an officer is responding appropriately. And what the studies show is that better educated officers yield better outcomes when interacting with um, residents and citizens of the state. So, so we equalized um, the education pay among all officers in the Stoughton Police Department. So that's the other component. The final component, which is a little bit different for supervisors, is Stoughton um, was organized in, in a way that was different than other communities, whereby lieutenants were responding to calls rather than sergeants who while overseeing the patrol officers. And we made adjustments, and as a consequence, we gave certain monetary payments for that. Does that answer your question, Mr. Gito? I didn't tally them. I, could someone else tally them? <laughs> okay, so. 
Okay, let's just take a moment to tell you, if we can, if we can do that. I don't know. I honestly couldn't tell because it's... That's it. Mr. Moderator? Yes. Could I just make a comment while they're doing that? Because my question follows up on this. And I'm uh, not sure if it's the same thing they're doing, and I don't want them to have to do it again. Actually, I'd rather wait if you don't mind. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so there, there are distinctions between patrol officers, sergeants, and lieutenants and what the percentage increase would be. For sergeants, we calculate that to be 13.5%. Over, over the three years. Lieutenants, we believe, is 15 over three years. And patrol doesn't have that. I'm not 100% sure, but I think they get two and a half less, so I think they're 11% um, over three years. We're trying to double check that number. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. So 11% over three years. Mr. Gito, is that? Oh, is that what you had? Okay, that's, it jives with what Mr. Gito had. Are we all set now? Yes. Okay, thank you for doing that. All right, moving on to Pat Colburn. Please identify yourself. Pat Colburn, Precinct 4. I would have a hard time approving either of these, not based on merit, but because there are unknown numbers in here. And the percentages just are not enough for me. I would like to have seen, and this is a question if you can provide it, the 2025, 2026, and 2027, what is the dollar amount for the base wage? What is the dollar amount for the COLA that has now been reintroduced? What is the dollar amount for the longevity that has been reintroduced? The dollar amount for the Quinn bill, which was stated was already rolled into many paychecks, and now it's coming back again? The dollar amount for the body cans? The dollar amount for the regional? And the dollar amount for the readjusting of the hierarchy? So if I don't have those numbers, and I can't tell you what it's going to cost this town, not in estimates, but based on the people for each year. There's just no way I can approve this. So that's my first question that I don't expect any answer yet. My second question to the chief, if I may, and please, I'm trying to be delicate, but I did read the contracts. Does anything about removing from civil service or this new contract make it any easier or more efficient to remove or discipline an officer who has crossed over the line? Is anything like that addressed in this contract. Do you want me to address it? I, if you'd like, I can address both. I, I'll defer to the chief in a minute. Um, but which one do you want first? I'll give you the financials first because I have them in front of me. That's I don't right. have them broken down by, say, 1% equals this, but I have the total delta for year one for superior officers is, a, so the delta being the difference in the, in the budget, $163,904.15. And for patrol officers in year one, the delta, the change in the budget is $575,954.37. Years two, and so I'll do two, uh, superior officers, 102000 270 and 59 cents. Uh, year two patrol officers, $328,718.31. Um, superior officers in year three, 
$71,000 and, oh, excuse me, $71,058 and 98 cents. Um, patrol officers year three, $168,000. $871.77. All of those figures were sent to the Finance Committee. As to the, did you get them all down, Ms. Colburn? I did, but is that the base as well as every single one of those adjustments I mentioned, or is that just the base? That's, that's the change in the budget, so accounting for all of those increases. And it's budgeted um, within the budget in Article um, 15. So we're looking at roughly 800,000. I'm sorry, I can't do the math in my head right now for year one. Year two would be 430,000 roughly, and year three would be, I don't know, 250, 250,000? Rough numbers, yeah. I mean, without doing the math, that's, that's roughly. Okay, and if I could just add, just like with the previous motion, could we please have these numbers in writing? Uh, this is a lot to ask people to approve on the fly without seeing them, but I appreciate the numbers. Thank you. Sure. Now, relative to um, disciplining officers, so under civil service, so the standard isn't necessarily different. Um, it's just cause standard, right? And, and that's not atypical with any public employee. Okay, so what it means is there has to be the, the discipline is equal to the misconduct. And the way that discipline cases will be reviewed going forward is through the arbitration process, which is also what exists with your um, other union personnel. So your library, your clerical staff, all of those people um, have the right to go to arbitration if there is discipline imposed. If, does that answer your question? Uh, I, I think it does. Um. And, and one other thing, this might be helpful. So, and I'm not sure of the speaker's name before who spoke about being in corrections and, and public safety. Sandra Souza. Sure, yes, and um, she spoke about the post commission. So this is a new police reform, obviously with um, some recent terrible incidents. Um, the legislature passed um, a, a new legislation and created this new requirement which really gives oversight over the managers of police departments because what what may have been happening is certain chiefs may not have been issuing the types of discipline that were appropriate, uh, appropriate for certain misconduct. And so anytime you have misconduct now in the state of Massachusetts, not only does the chief determine what to impose and is that, that subject to an arbitrator's review and, uh, you know, potentially the union challenging that. But what happens is any time a complaint is submitted against a police officer or there are allegations of misconduct, it's reported now to the state. And the state has independent authority to say, do you have the right to be a police officer in the state? Was the um, discipline sufficient for the misconduct that was proven? Okay, and so that's through a certification process, and if there are serious allegations of misconduct and they haven't been handled correctly by management, the state can take away an officer's certification and they can no longer work as a police officer in this state. Does that help? It does, thank you. I, I won't go on. It's just reading the post commission, there were so many resigned in lieu of discipline. I wondered if that would change, but I appreciate the answers. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, both of you. Next up is Mr. Bob Cohn. Can you identify yourself, please? Bob Cohn, Precinct 5. When you please present this budget, I'd like it broken down. And does this consist of a full contingency of a full police department? or the men we have right now in our department? The numbers that I presented are a full cost out of the individual officers based on their actual education status. So if John Doe has a bachelor's, that's included in those numbers. I understand. Are we based, you said a full contingency. 
as we have, not now, but we will have, I hope, in the future. Oh, uh, in staffing up. That's correct. No. It, so, so we're basing everything on what we have today. So we're, we're basing the, we based the budget, we knew prior to putting this budget together what the costs were for the patrol officers when we, and we anticipated what the spear officers were. So we put the percentages in because we had a, the first signed agreement with the patrol officers. And then we put the additional percentages in for everything, education, every aspect of the MOU into the contract. This is for a into full the, into contingency. The budget. Yes, that would be um, a full superior officers, all filled out, uh, fulfilled positions in the spare offices. And it would be, you'll see the note when we go to the budget that there's four positions in the patrol officers uh, line item that is going to be utilized to uh, pay for some of the superior officers contract. So we know, myself and the, and the town manager know that we're going to hire up to 50 police officers at the patrol level and leave four vacant so we can fund the spare officers. Excuse portion. me, did you say 15 or 50? 50, 5-0. Five, 5-0. Zero. Five, zero. Can I offer a suggestion, please? Instead of coming and throwing bulk numbers, how about offering what each one of these people are going to get? Awful hard to digest to do this at a, special, at a town meeting, throwing numbers like this. To me, it's ridiculous. We come to town meeting as members of this body, expect the information. I have sat here, it's now quarter, excuse me. No, excuse me, sir. Question period. Is this gonna be a question? No, this is, this is part of this, sir. Well, no, no, it's a question, pro, right now, we can get the pro and con debate All in right. a few minutes. You can bring to it To me, on. this, it helps. But it doesn't break it down per officer. No one knows what a, we have to divide, we have to do that. That's your job. Okay, wait, wait a minute. Question. Question is, why do we get these numbers at a last minute? Why? Okay, that's the question. Will we be able to answer that? Drew, you missed moderator. The, the patrol line out of when we go over the budget has the patrol line for all patrol officers, each individual <clears throat> officer may not, not every officer has the exact same pay because they may not have the exact same years of service. So each, we have, if we have 54 officers and 50 filled, it would be 50 different numbers just for the patrol. Then okay. we have 10 sergeants, we'd have 10 different numbers, and then four lieutenants, four, four different numbers possibly. So there would be a lot. So that's why it's one line item for those patrol, sergeant, and, and lieutenant. That's I've the been way here for 45 years, and this is one of the worst I've seen. Oh. Thank you. I, I think if I could just jump in there as the moderator, it might be good. That question should be asked at FinCon public hearings. That would be a good question at the pub, public hearings for the Finance Committee. Okay, no, I'm just saying that for the public to attend those Finance Committee. That's where it's a lot of these questions should be asked. Excuse me, Mr. Moderator. That's what we have a Finance Committee representing us. They should be asking these questions, too. Uh, we did. Okay, we I don't want to. I, okay, I don't want to do cross debate. But th at that time, I mean, everybody's invited to all the standing committee hearings. You can see them on TV. But it's really good, Mr. Cohen. I and to everybody else. I yeah, I appreciate all the questions. This is the time for the questions. But I'm just saying. Also, there's also a lot of public hearings that go on. A lot of people don't show up. It's time to start showing up to those public hearings. I'm not saying anything bad about you, Mr. Cohen, at all. I appreciate your questions. I just like to see those those meetings should be attended as by as many town town meeting reps and the public at large as possible. That's all I'm saying. Okay, Mr. Moderator, I've got a continuation answer to that question. If I may, uh, Mr. Carrara has a point of oh, I see to Mr. Carrara. Please identify yourself, please. Scott Carrara, Precinct Two. Vice Chair, for the last 10 years that we've sat here, this book has carried the bottom line. Everybody got away from we don't want to do line item people in their names or their positions, and we didn't want it was getting to be tedious. Everybody's, why are we going through this like this? I guarantee you, in 10 minutes when we start getting into the budget or Next time we get into the budget, you'll see budgets fly through. 
and then we'll stop at one that's got a 12,000 bottom line and we'll sit here for two hours and, and bark about it. These gentlemen, we need them. We just put $66 million into a school. Who's going to protect the kids in there? Let's hope that we can fill the positions. We've sat, this group, bargaining and going over this stuff to understand why. The chief has explained it to us. We've already taken the public works out of um, the civil service. They're not having a problem. They're actually doing well. Give Donna the chance. Give the chief the chance to do well. They're down a bunch of people. I don't want to see any more leave. I want them to stay. We need them. Things aren't getting any better in this world. Think of that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pryor. Uh, Mr. Town Manager. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I want to tell you all, I, I love this town. I don't live here, but I love this town. I don't love the last 10 minutes of this discussion. We started these budget deliberations six months ago. Six months ago, in September. We spent the entire month of March, excuse me, the entire month of December, presenting every single line item of every single budget to the select board. Once they passed it, the end of December, we spent the same process the entire month of March, two and three nights a week, and the other two nights preparing for the intense questions asked by your very able finance committee. And because of their questioning, the budgets got better, they got stronger, they got more precise. This isn't the beginning of the process like it is for some town meeting reps who I'm meeting for the first time this evening. It was a very long, detailed process here in Stoughton. And when we get to the actual budget, the operating budgets for police and fire, you're going to see even more detailed summaries. If we presented the type of information, the voluminous information the gentleman was just demanding, you are going to be carrying 10 books into this town meeting. Not two. I want to respond to, the, to this business question as well. People say, are we a municipality or are we a business? And I want to remind you of the department that you're quizzing right now. As we began this year, we knew we had a crisis in our police department. We knew we had to hire 14 new people. We knew that we had to bring them through training for their CAMs. We knew we had to go through reorganization and leave civil service. And we knew because of the competitive situation, our attrition rate was skyrocketing and our ability to hire was plummeting. We knew we had to apply some business principles to fix that business model. So we proposed, we didn't propose, it was your manager's discretion, to join Regional 911. And we saved $900,000 a year so that we could afford to plug the holes in the police department that were destroying their capacity to serve you. Good business principles were applied. $900,000 a year, plus $8 million in capital improvements for the most advanced communication system for EMS in the town of Stoughton of any town in the, in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. So we applied those business practices to find the money to plug those holes. And so just imagine how difficult it is for the chief and her staff to be treated I'm done. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Coulter. Uh, I think also I just, to stick up for the town meeting reps, they do have a right to ask any questions, but I appreciate your comments, Mr. Coulter. I just thought uh, we got to kind of thread the needle, fine line here with the questions. Um, obviously, any, any more questions, technical questions? Uh, Sandra Souza, please identify yourself. <clears throat> Sandra Souza, Precinct 1. Uh, I do have a couple of questions. Sure. And um, our questions don't mean that, at least my questions don't mean that I don't support the police or the police chief because 
I certainly do. They do a great job. We need them. Um, but our responsibility is to ask these questions, again, because I'm representing my precinct. So my first question is um, going back to the what some have referred to as the twin bill, the college stipends, the educational stipends. Um, I teach at the college level, so I'm very supportive of that. They seem very generous to me, though, <laughs> I will admit. 20% um, on base salary and then 25 for a master's, 20% for a bachelor's. Seems ex extremely generous. So looking back on what they were and what they've jumped to, I guess my question surrounds why there wasn't sort of an ease, easing in um, is this standard? It just, as I said, seems extremely generous. Um, you know, if a patrolman is making $100,000 a year, 20% for a bachelor's on top of that, that's a lot of money. And then instead of having it specifically in a law enforcement area, you can now have it in the natural sciences. So you could venture off and go into another area, mathematics or, or whatever. So again, I'm not, you know, I certainly am in support of an educated force, but I guess I'm questioning that degree of, no pun intended. Yeah, um, and I can take it or you. It. So um, what we were trying to do is address the market um, issues that we were facing because for years um, these officers hadn't been receiving the same benefit that other officers in other communities were doing. Um, and because we had the 911 money available, we, we knew that we could fund it. Um, so it was really just to do a correction where you were getting, I don't want to say a coupon, but you were getting uh, to pay less in the prior years and we made the immediate correction just to recognize that fact. Um, the, the degrees were certainly something that were hotly deba debated um, in negotiations. We, we excluded really sort of ones that did not connect to policing, but you're pointing to, yes, there are things like mathematics. It's not necessarily directly connected, but it's certainly a challenging degree, and what it said to us was that you had the wherewithal to withstand that type of program, so you have the logic skills, the analytical skills, all of those things that are maybe not when do I arrest someone? You learn that in the police academy. But this is how I apply these principles in life, and this is how I analyze problems when they come to me. So, so to your point, no, we didn't ease them in because we knew we had the budget to do it this year, given the 911 savings, and um, we were really addressing a serious correction um, that we were facing in terms of market and the risk of losing officers immediately if we didn't correct for that more immediately was great and we wanted to address it um, to avoid that. And I'll give you a for example, I have a different um, community where I had a 10 year sergeant and he left that particular police department to go to another town because of salary. So with the world being what it is, with the internet, social media, everything is accessible. So these figures are really apparent in, uh, to anyone. Mm -hmm. uh, so they're easily discoverable. And to Detective Barber's point earlier, there are a lot of openings. So it's an employee-friendly market. And there was a real risk of flight if we didn't address it immediately if that answers your question. It, it, it pretty much does. I guess my only, this is not a one-time thing. This is every year, correct? So it's a percentage on their salary every year. Okay. Correct. That's what I thought. And then my other question is based on the, I guess you'd call it the, perf well, it's the perfect attendance bonus or I don't know what you what else you'd call it so any employee that has perfect attendance for one calendar month 
gets four hours added to their vacation time, and you can accumulate as much as a maximum of 48 hours or six days a year. Yeah. So that's really been increased from the previous contract. So, um, you know. Yeah, I guess. So that was an existing benefit. It was. The difference is that we made it easier in the administration of that benefit. So that actually didn't yield any additional time. Instead, we it used to be that it was every two months, and then you would get, instead of four hours, eight hours, right? Double the time. So the time <laughs> itself is the same, but it proved to be sort of unwieldy in administering it. Um, for for staff, so we just simplified that person. So that's actually not a new benefit, right? But my question actually on that was, the is that a payout that they can collect when they retire, or does that go get added on to their retirement pay? So, for instance, if they can accumulate forty eight hours in a calendar year and they retire be, before the end of the calendar year, is that something that can go? You know, some things can go into their retirement pay, some things can't. Is that something that's able to be added into their retirement pay, or is that excluded? Are, are you referring, when you're talking about retirement pay, are you referring to pension, or are you yes. referring to, it's... Some it's, things can be added to the pension. Some it's not pensionable. Can't. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Next up is Mr. Scardino. Please identify yourself. Joe Scardino, Precinct 1. Through you, Mr. Moderator. To anyone who can answer the question, either the chief or town council, um, I heard uh, up to master's degree. But what happens if a patrolman goes for a law degree? That's a juris doctor in this commonwealth. Yes, so they receive the same pay as a master's degree. It's not higher. That answer your question. We any others? We good. Over here now, please identify yourself. Heather Kirby, Precinct 6. I'm also an educator. It's kind of more of a point of clarification because I was also curious about the, um, the recognizing and the compensation for higher degree. Um, it's, to have a master's degree, it looks like it's just 5% over what it would have to have a bachelor's degree. And for reference, in the 2023 teacher contract in Stoughton, to have a master's degree reflects a 5% increase over having a bachelor's. So there's not really a question. I just think that that clarification is important. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. All right, uh, Mr. Holmes? I'm waiting for debate. Debate? Okay, we're still in the technical questions. Mr. Delinsky? Yes, George Delinsky, Precinct 2. Just one quick question. In the Bible, I mean in Book 2, uh, on page 50, so we list 26 different majors. In the past, wasn't it limited to law enforcement of some sort having to do with police work versus having to do something with uh, uh, English education, communications, public policy? All these 26 different majors, is there anything that we've excluded? Go ahead, Chief. Through you, Mr. Moderator. So we required that it's an accredited organization, school education that they have to get. And we want well-rounded, well-trained police officers that make up what our community is. Someone with a mathematics degree, we had someone in the Stoughton Police Department that had a mathematics degree. You know what he did? He was an accident reconstructionist. That's what his master's was. He had to go back and get a master's to be an accident reconstructionist. So we need all varieties of degrees within our department. And th if you can get a degree that is from an accredited institution and you're working as a police officer, you should be compensated for it. No, I'm not disagreeing with the compensation. It I used believe to be just an law educated enforcement. police force is important. I was just questioning the variety of degrees that fall under this umbrella. That's all. And we're using that as an, a recruitment tool to bring people in from a variety of backgrounds. Okay, thank you. Anybody else with technical questions before we move on? I see none. Okay, let's move into pro and con debate. Mr. Holmes, you're up for us. Brian Holmes, Precinct 3. I don't think anybody, anybody's going to be shocked that I'm going to ask town meeting to stand with me and support both of these articles and vote in favor of them. Uh, I'm 
Talking about recruitment and retention, the last article was a, re a, a recruitment tool. This article, these two articles, these collective bargaining agreements are a strategy for retaining employees. I'm glad that you both uh, got to speak, Lieutenant Derby, Detective Barber, because uh, town meeting gets to see two educated, trained professionals who represent the department well, as well as their union constituents. Um, in terms of uh, the collective bargaining process, it's regulated by Chapter 150E, and I've spoken about this before in previous town meetings. Uh, the process is overseen by the Department of Labor Relations. Uh, it's a fair and equitable process. This contract and these articles that support them were uh, negotiated in good faith. Uh, as the town manager indicated previously, uh, we're in a state of labor harmony in this town, and not every town can say that. Um, I would also suggest that any recommendations to an amendment to the bottom line of the police department budget would be designed to thwart those processes. So I hope town meeting keeps that in mind and stands with me in supporting these articles. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Next up is Mr. Rock. Hi, John Rock, Precinct 3. Uh, I agree with what he said. Uh, uh, so generally, uh, uh, I'm very much in agreement with what the town manager said and what S Selectman Carrera said. Um, I don't think this is the place. I, I appreciate people, you know, wanting to ask questions, but I think the time to kind of micromanage these contracts was at the various committee meetings. Uh, public safety, fire, police, and education are the backbone of any community. We have to stay competitive. Uh, you know, uh, the only way to do that is to keep up with what other cities and towns in the area are offering. I think we need to trust our elected leaders and appointed uh, leaders uh, to have bargained in good faith and to know what the conditions are and how to remedy the situation. So I wholeheartedly support this, and I hope you will too. Okay, thank you very much for your comments. Over here, please identify yourself. Debbie Menz, Precinct 8. Um, thank you, Chief. I am 100% in support of this article. We had no problem passing on $114 million for a new elementary school to bring it up to current date with technology, this, that, and the other thing. But here we are, nickel and diming our police department. Enough already. Support our police. They protect you. They protect everybody. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much for your comments. Next up, I'm going to go to Mr. Giro, then Mr. Cohn. Mr. Giro, please identify yourself. Thank you. Uh, Lou Giro, Precinct 4. Uh, I support the police. I want everyone to know that. The issue is not a number of the issues that were, were, were discussed here. My concern is that we talk about not having money to do things. And we talk about that we do not have many mechanisms to, in fact, effectuate change. The intent of coming to town meeting with an article to approve a contract is for, as some other person mentioned, the contract goes on forever and until it's modified, and, and those contracts keep going up. The particular issue that concerns me, concerned me, uh, Officer Barber made very good points, and I appreciate that, and I mentioned that to him, is that we have spent the last 10 years trying to wean ourselves away from 
the Quinn Bill because it was a way of providing money for education that, that communities could not afford. Maybe they can afford it now. And good luck to us all. But we had a meeting uh, to talk about debt in the town just last Wednesday and found that we do not have much money within our tax levy to do the things that need to be done. People have talked about certain salary costs being raised an awful lot and complain about that. This budget for the police department, as was mentioned, raises the budgets, if I can only find a piece of paper here, uh, by either 13 or 15 and a half percent for superior officers uh, and for the patrolmen, I believe it was uh, 13%. And that doesn't count the percentage for the Quinn Bill difference. We are paying people on an annual basis I think the last contracts are about ten or eleven thousand dollars, plus or minus a little bit. Mr. Gito, could you wrap it up? Your time's up. Three minutes is up. Sorry, I have to let you know. Are you all done? You told me I was all okay, done. Okay, thank you. I'm just but, trying to but, be polite. But okay. but the the point I was trying to make is that these changes to go to the Quinn Bill represents about 5% more. So we have like 20%, 18%, and 17% or 16%. I'm going to have to stop the you there. I'm sorry. I have to stop you. We need to move on. I'm trying to be fair to everybody. All right. Uh, thank you. Next up is Mr. Cohn. Please identify yourself, please. Bob Cohn, Precinct 5. I support the police department no matter what I ask for. They are a vital part of this town with the fire department, and we got to don't forget public works. And during snow, rain, hurricanes, they're out there too. But the police department is a vital thing. I've always learned in business you pay for what you get, and I guess we didn't pay enough because we're down all these officers. What I worried about was the strain that's put on these poor officers that are working God, and they are working ungodly hours. They're out here protecting us, and again, I hate to be gloomy, they go out in the morning, and sometimes you gotta wonder if they're ever gonna come home, and that's important too. I support them, and I hope everyone here supports them, and remember, we pay for what we get. Thank you. All right, thank you, moving on. Next up, Mr. Soares, please identify yourself. Joe Soares, Precinct 2. We need the police department. Right now, I don't think we even understand how much we need the police department. We have open borders, and we're going to need the police department. Thank you very much, and I'm going to vote for it. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> Moving on. Next up is Lisa Lyons. Please identify yourself. Hi, Lisa Lyons, Precinct 2. To a previous speaker's point, if we cannot be more concerned about beautification of the town than supporting our police department, who, as a previous speaker just pointed out, puts their life on the line every single day, I wholeheartedly support the chief, and we must approve this. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> Moving on, next up is Becca Moxon. Becca Markson, Precinct 7, move the question. Okay, do I have a second? Bob Cohn seconded. Okay, this will cut off debate. We do have some others that would like to speak. 
but it's up to the body here. Uh, it takes it, we're gonna do by we're gonna do by two thirds by voice vote. If there's any doubt in the moderator's mind, we'll have to go to a clicker. All right, this is the cutoff debate. Two thirds required. All those in favor by voice vote. The cutoff debate. Say aye. Aye. All those opposed. Okay, the motion passes. I believe, believe I only heard one no. So I'm gonna, the moderator declares that a vote that it passes the cutoff debate. Okay, at this point in time, um, we have to. Is there? A, would you like a summary at all, Chief? Certainly. I, I will be brief. The men and women of the Stoughton Police Department deserve to be compensated properly for the job that they do. Please vote in favor of this. Thank you. Okay, we're going to uh, just was discussing with the uh, acting town clerk. We're going to vote Article 12 first, one at a time. It's simple majority. Simple majority. All right. Once I get the go ahead. Okay, please vote now. You have 20 seconds. Simple majority. One, two, or three. All right, just to clarify, you can see it up there. Motion passes, 105 yes, 18 no, 6 abstentions. I declare that a vote. All right, now let's bring up Article 13, please. Okay, on Article 13, since they would discuss at the same time, we're going to just vote this right now. Simple majority. Are we ready for the clickers? Okay, please vote now. One, two, or three, please. Five seconds left. Okay, motion passes 109 yes, 15 no, six abstentions. Moderator declares out of vote. All right, we're going to move on. Okay, so now thank everybody for their presentations. All the questions that were asked, technical questions, appreciate all that, and your votes. We appreciate all that. All right, moving on. At this time, I'm going to ask, um, I'm going to discuss a little bit before I ask the deputy moderator to make a proposed motion on the consent agenda. Hopefully, everybody saw the consent agenda. Okay, the consent agenda was on the table, and it's also going to be uh, proposed motion. Yep. Here's the consent of agenda one, one, two, three, four, five, six. There's seven articles. I just want to uh, state how we how we worked this. Like last time, we added a few more articles. I think last time was only four or five last year. This time there's seven, two, four, or six. I want to make sure it's seven. If anybody wants to pull any one of these out after the motion is made, you can say hold article uh, four. I'm just making that, throwing that out as an example. I'm just going to ask the person's name. So whatever articles people want to hold, we can pull it out, and then we're going to vote the remaining articles as one motion. Everybody clear on that? Okay, it's very clear. Just go along with the moderator. You'd be very satisfied. I appreciate it. All right. So, okay. Yep. All right. So I'm going to ask Deputy Moderator Carmel Drews to make that motion, please. Move to accept consent agenda one as written and approve an and approve annual town meeting articles two, three, four, five, eleven, nineteen, and twenty-eight. Second. There's a second made motion was made by Carmel Drew, seconded by John Inzavino. Again, you see the articles, the individual articles on the screen, I believe. I don't have to say them. I don't have to say them. I just got confirmation from town council. Uh, she says yep. Okay. Anybody has a hold on any of these, please tell us now or we're going to move forward. 
Uh, I don't know if you want to call it a hold. Oh, you have every, to know. Every, Eric, right, right, a hold. Yeah. Number two. Hold number two. Hold 11 and 28, please. Just bear with me for a second. Hold number two and Pat Colburn 11 and 28. Anybody else? Hearing none, seeing none. Uh, Sam, you have to get to the microphone so we can have the record. 19. All right. So right now we're going to pull out of these, you know, magically pull out. We're not going to vote on 2, 11, 19, or 28. Article 5. All right. So now we're going to, it's, it's the choice of the town meeting reps. So we're going to pull out 2, 5, 11, 19, and 28. So we're just going to approve Article 3 and 4 if this motion passes. Everybody clear on that? Only 3 and 4. Article, I'm going to just read them. Article 3, accept and contract funds for town roads. And Article 4, apply for and accept federal slash state funding. All right? 3 and 4 are we going to vote on. Everybody agree with that? Do I have a confirmation with the town clerk's office? Three and four. We're just going to throw that up on the screen to make it simple, I guess. And then we're going to go back and discuss these articles in, the, in order or process, I guess, I guess from the book. It would be easier. We're just going to take a moment. That come out? No, nothing on the screen. It's kind of messy on the screen. We just do this by voice vote. It's pretty simple. Okay? Everybody okay by book? Any objections? We just, we can do three and four. Everybody okay? I'm going to do this by voice vote. Simple majority? Correct. Simple majority by voice vote. All those in favor of approving on the consent agenda as amended, Article 3, accept and contract funds for town roads, and Article 4, apply for and accept federal state funding. Please say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Unanimous. So 3 and 4 is accepted per the consent agenda. Thank you all for voting. All right. Now we're going to go to Article 2. This is usually a um, matter of fact... Um, pretty much approved, but, you know, uh, it was pulled, so we're going to discuss it. So Article 2, let me just get to it. Uh, Article 2, Carmel Drew is going to have you read the motion, please. Sorry to put you on the spot. It's so on page oh, 26. Article yes. Article 2, proposed motion, that the town vote to receive the reports of any boards or town officers or of any other duly established commission, council, or authority of the town. Who seconded Cynthia Walsh? Okay, thank you. Motion made by Carmel Drew, seconded by Cynthia Walsh. All right. Uh, there are not any standing committee reports. Uh, pretty much, I don't think we, do we need to have a presentation on this? We usually don't. Okay. Why don't I just ask the person who held it, uh, what's your question on it? Well, it's a comment if I, I can. Well, do you have, All right. a, do you have a reason yeah. why you're holding it? Yes. That's every what year, we like to hear. Every year for a while, I've been getting this book and looking for an index or a table of contents and page numbers. They're not there. I'm requesting it again. That's it. Everything's fine aside from that. Although I didn't get to look at much of the book. That's it. Well, the, uh, 
I think, uh, I think it means that they accept any reports. I'm gonna ask for clarification from town council. Okay. <laughs> uh, article two. That, Eric, that's all you're asking for? There's page numbers in the blue book? In the future? Please use the microphone. I'd like to just quiz you a little bit so I get clarification. You, okay, you're referencing the annual report yes, that was the on the table. Yes, annual report. And I don't want to hold it up anymore. So. Okay, I, I, Okay, see in the back there's some page numbers on something here. All right, so you're asking for page numbers. Can we make a note for the officials at Town Hall? Please write page numbers on the annual report. All right. Index. All right, I guess we'll get that fixed for next year. All right, anybody else who want to talk about Article 2? Okay. Uh, Okay, uh, right now it's up on the screen, right, ready to go. By clicker, I'm gonna ask you to vote right now. One, two, or three. No, it's on the, foot, on the screen. Three, two, one, it passes. One eighteen yes, one no, zero abstentions. All right, we're going to go to is it five? Yes, five. Article five, and that appears on page. If I can find it. Uh, Page 27, right in the middle of page 27. That's disposal of town property. And let me just see five. Uh, can I have the deputy moderator again to make that motion, put it on the floor, please? That the town that the town vote to authorize the select board and or its designee to dispose by auction or otherwise town-owned property in accordance with general law C30B. Uh, John Anzavino did second that. Motion made by Carmel Drew, seconded by John Anzavino. Can I have the Finance Committee report, please? The Finance Committee voted 12 to 0 to recommend the motion for Article 5 as written in the warrant. Thank you. All right. Um, at this point in time, Mr. Murphy, you had a question on this? Peter Murphy, Precinct 2. Yes, I actually have two questions. First question is, and I asked this question last year, would someone please define property? Property could cover anything from a ballpoint pen that's owned by the town to this building that we're standing in. Could we have an answer to that from town council? Uh, so you're correct, but there is certain property that would still have to come back to town meeting. So if you have... Um, computers that are no longer viable and you clean them, that could be property that's disposed um, through vote by the Board of Selectmen and then it goes to auction, right? Um, but then, for example, real property, if you had owned a, a piece of property and you know you're not going to use it for municipal purposes, certainly the select board can declare it surplus, but then it has to come back to town meeting for approval. So, so there is a range, but there are certain insignificant ones that don't come back to town meeting, while significant ones such as real property come back to town meeting. No, I understand that, but it, it doesn't state that. That's, that's my concern question. And, for example, the South School, we're going to go and replace that, that building that's there. If the town was to decide to sell that, according to this article, Tom could put it on uh, Craigslist and sell it. Um, town Council, can you? I mean, do you mean the building itself? It, like, pick it up and well, sell no, it? No, what I'm saying is, well, <coughs> the contents of the South School, 
The contents, yes. So for example, the board, if those desks were no longer needed, I mean, that's really school committee property, so it's different. But let's say it was a municipal <laughs> building. The DPW building had desks that they no longer needed. The board could uh, vote that it surplus these broken down desks and sell them at auction to whomever would want the desks. No, okay. Then the second question is, the proceeds from these sales, where do the proceeds go to? <coughs> okay, I'm sorry, I was coughing there. It, it's okay, general fund. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Wanamilkin, do you have a question? Well, I just wanted to point out that this section does say it's in accordance with general law chapter 30B. So I'm, I don't think the town manager is going to put it on Craigslist because I don't think that would be in. I'm just pointing that out. There is a reference to a law in here. I just wanted to point that out. Okay, I just didn't know that law. I'll have to look that up and go to law school. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Okay, thank you all that. for your participation. Okay, we, any other discussion or debate on that article? Hearing none, do we have it up on the screen? All right, this is on page 27. Uh, simple majority, please vote now, one, two, or three. No, not all the time. Just it's on the screen, I see. Take it easy. Okay, Article 5, motion passes. 119 yes, three no, zero abstentions. To declare that a vote. Okay, moving on, we're going to go to Article 6, Cedar Hill Enterprise Fund Budget. Well, well, it's no longer the consent. They were pulled out and on hold. As I mentioned, I go back in order, instead of jumping around all over the place. Because there's no longer, the only thing that I believe that's on the, in my opinion, the moderator's opinion, is on the consent agenda was Article 3 and 4, been modified on, this, on the uh, town floor, town meeting floor. Uh, Article 6, that appears on page 28. Cedar Hill Enterprise Fund budget. At this time, can I ask Mr. Nokian to read the proposed munch, um, motion? That the town vote pursuant to the provisions of General Law Chapter 44, Section 53F and one half, to appropriate the sum of four hundred sixty-six thousand and one dollars to fund the Cedar Hill Golf Course for fiscal year 2025. Let me read the motion right here. To be raised 460, yeah. fiscal year 2025 with 466001 to be raised from FY 2025 Cedar Hill Golf Course revenue. That I'll second. Okay, is it Thanks. seconded? I did. Second. Seconded by John and Zavino. Okay, Mr. Nokian, can I have the Finance Committee report? Finance Committee voted 12 to 0 to recommend the motion for Article 6 as written in the warrant. Okay, thank you. I just want to give a point of order here, Mr. Mullen. Yes, Mr. moderator. Go ahead, Mr. Through Andrew. you. Just a reminder, this happened last year. Um, your enterprise fund, and there is money listed in Article 15 in the budget. This is the only time you have to ask questions about any of that budget, because last year, any, any change or any questions on the budget we're denied at the time we were doing the budget because it's all done in the enterprise account. I just wanted to make that clear to that's, the town meeting. That's true. I have my notes on that too. So, okay. Just so they know that if there's a question on the budget, they should bring it up now. Yeah, now's the time to bring up anything in that budget and also in the enterprise fund. Because once we vote this in, the budget section of the budget's also closed. So do we know what page the budget is on? I do. It's right in the table of contents. Okay, very good. <laughs> is it page? Is it page? Oh, you, you want to know it? Okay. Yeah. No, it's really well, the actual budget is in the, yeah. the whole budget in the fund. Is well, that's part of the budget. That's the 
That's the enterprise fund. That's the enterprise. But we're talking fund. about the budget. No, if you have any questions. Does anybody actually have any questions on the enterprise, on uh, this enterprise fund? 15, which is the budget. Okay, I'm going to ask for um, uh, Victor. Are you doing the presentation? Yes, sir. My, uh, my budget is on page 63, just so everyone knows. Thank you very much. Almost so we're going to ask, first I'll ask for page. the presentation. Go ahead, Victor. You have 10 minutes. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Victor Baruza from Cedar Hill Golf Course. Um, we've had another banner year at Cedar Hill. Uh, the numbers keep growing, and uh, in large part thanks to the CPC. Uh, I want to thank them uh, publicly. Uh, their support and the construction that we did back in 2000 changed things dramatically. We went up 110% that year. Um, COVID came, we went up another 28% from that. And we've grown at, at, at an average of 15% each year since then, and it looks like we're going to close that way again. Um, other than that, my budget's pretty clear, but if anyone has any questions, I'll be glad to take them. Mr. Moderator, page 157 and 158. Thank you. Page 157 and 158 for the, the details of the budget. On I apologize, CNN. Mr. Noki, and I, I was looking at the little number down on the bottom. <laughs> All right. On, uh, on so the this, side of the page. Okay, no problem. So this is the time for any technical questions. Anybody have any technical questions on this? No. Nope. I don't see none. Any pro and con debate? Okay, seeing none, let's bring the motion. Uh, Victor, do you have a, you want to do a summary? Thanks for all your support over the years, and I'm glad we're able to get to this point where we're not a two-and-a-half-hour debate. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much for your presentation and your summary. All right, we're ready to vote this. Okay, please vote now. You have 20 seconds and counting down. Simple majority. All right. Article 6, motion passes. 111 yes, 7 no, 2 abstentions. Thank, Thank you, you for so voting. Moving on to Article 7, that appears on page 30. This is the Public Health Association Enterprise Fund Budget. And Mr. Anzavino, I'm assuming the same rule applies, the budget is... The I, would assume you, I would assume you'd rule the yeah, same Yeah, I would thing. rule it the same. I don't know if you have the page numbers for that particular budget. While you're doing that, can I ask Mr. Enokian to uh, read the motion, please? That the town vote pursuant to the provisions of General Law Chapter 44, Section 53, F and 1 half, to appropriate the sum of $1,006,072 to fund the Stoughton Public Health Association Enterprise for fiscal year 2025, with $477,380 we raised from FY 2025 public health revenue and other available funds, and $128,692 to be transferred from the public health retained earnings, and $400,000 to be transferred and appropriated from free cash. Second. Second by Cynthia Walsh. And the, the budget for that is on page 156 in book one. Okay. Uh, if you need to refer to the budget for the health, public health is on page 156. Thank you, Mr. Anzavino. Okay. Uh, Juan, can I have the Finance Committee report, please? Finance Committee voted 12 to 0 to recommend the motion for Article 7 as written in the warrant. Okay, Article 7. Uh, Mr. Coulter? Good evening, Mr. Moderator, and through you to the members. Just a brief introduction. Uh, Jenna Crimmins, many of you may know her, is our new department head uh, for VNA and public health. Uh, and I want to welcome Janet to this uh, glorious event and to ask all of you to take it easy. I've never more. Met, never met a more nervous person in her maiden voyage. I want to bring you back to town meeting a year ago. Uh, the structural deficit was greater then. 
uh, this business is, is going to have a real struggle to even get to break even. With the changes in Medicare and in, re in insurance uh, reimbursements, uh, it's very, very, very difficult. What makes it even worse is this business, this little tiny business, uh, is structured as an enterprise fund. Unlike regular departments in the town, it gets hit with a $265,000 indirect cost allocation. A million dollar business gets hit with a $265,000 cost uh, allocation. So we plan to bring this to you in the fall town meeting, asking members to consider changing this to a regular town department. But just to give you some numbers, well, before I do that, you made it clear this time last year I still remember Mr. Cohn being very uh, expressive about this, that this is a small investment, this structural deficit, for the service that particularly our seniors get. And I'll let Janet speak to that, and I think your questions will, will uh, uh, stress that even more. But I want to give you some quick numbers so you know exactly where it is. The VNA, uh, on page 31, has billings uh, budgeted for next year of $477,000. Free cash, is, free cash, there's $400,000 used in their, in their budget. And there's retained earnings of $128,692. So if you look at that, the retained earnings and the billings, the structural deficit is not $400,000 if you take out the indirect costs. It's $133,000. Retained earnings, the money the business has earned. Now, we hope to wipe that out next year, and here's how we're going to do it. Right now, it's known as Stoughton Public Health and VNA. So we don't, go, don't get calls from border communities of seniors that need our help. And we're not at full capacity, even with only two nurses. But by rebranding this business to be a regional VNA, we'll be able to grow the revenue stream to get to break even because our cost structure is so low. But we also have to remove it from being an enterprise fund. There's no way a million-dollar business can cover a $265,000 uh, assigned allocation that they don't spend a dime of it. It's just broken up among all enterprise funds. Now, even if we eliminated the VNA, we still have a, structure, a statutory obligation to provide public health services. Let's say that's one and a half people, one full-time person, one half-time person. Salaries and expenses will be up over $150,000. So we're still going to have $150,000 with little or no reimbursement. The VNA services are actually subsidizing the statutory requirement to have a public health department. So there's a story behind the numbers. What we promise you is we're going to do everything else to rebrand this business so we can get it to break even, to zero. And I think what's going to drive this, this vote tonight is do you want to continue to have a VNA service? I asked you that question last year, and your answer was a strong and resounding yes. I think what it's going to come down to tonight is do you want to continue until we can get it to break even? to subsidize this business. So uh, I know Janet will, will answer any technical questions you have. Biz will answer any financial questions you have. And I'll answer questions if they tell me to. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Glover. Thank you, Mr. Coulter. OK, now there's time for technical questions. Any technical questions? Seeing Lisa Lyons, please uh, introduce yourself, please. Hi, Lisa Lyons, Precinct 2. So that was an excellent question. I just wanted to clarify, so the state at one point was reimbursing the VNA and is no longer do, doing so, just like I heard earlier, earlier that the Quinn was funded and then so the state does renege on some things. Now, that's mostly for a chair of a committee who tried to tell us that the state always funds, but that's not always true, is that correct? Excuse me, excuse me. The moderator make those decisions. If you want to come up and join me as a deputy moderator, associate deputy, come on forward. We can talk about it. Until Thank then, you. please uh, remain silent, if you would. Yeah, Don't interrupt the speaker. Thank you. Excellent job, moderator. Oh, thank you very much, Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So uh, good evening, everyone. Um, through you, Mr. Moderator, no, we do not get any state funding. Okay. Thank you. All right. Anybody else with technical questions? <laughs> Mr. Scardino, go ahead, please. Identify yourself. Uh, Joe Scardino, Precinct 1. Uh, through you, Mr. Moderator, to whoever can answer the question. Um, I know that um, I have a volunteer position with the health center in Worcester. I know what Medicare and Medicaid rates of reimbursement do to any kind of organization. But uh, my question is more of, do we accept private insurance? Those reimbursement rates are much higher. And so I would that like an answer to that question. Thank you. Go ahead. For, yeah, able to yes, that. yes, we do. We, we we accept all insurance, pretty much all insurances right now, except for Blue Cross. We don't have a contract with Blue Cross, but mostly all the Medicare Advantage plans, the third party payers, we accept. Uh, on that last point that you made, uh, Ms. Crimmins, um, why don't we um, work towards a Blue Cross contract since they're one of the largest carriers next to point thirty two in the state? Mm -hmm. And, and we would love to have that. So if anyone out there can help us with that, we'd appreciate it. But we, uh, they won't give us a contract because of the size of our agency. So if things could change, then maybe that would change. Thank you very much. And thank you for your wonderful service to the thank town you. of Stoughton. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Gardino. Thank you both. All right. Anybody else with technical questions? Mr. Murphy, please identify yourself. Peter Murphy, Precinct 2. Uh, we're looking at building a 200 apartment unit in the near future, possibly. Do you anticipate more clients coming to Stoughton at v and a through that place? That would be wonderful. We could actually walk over there and take care of them. Thank you. Anybody else for technical questions? Mr. Cohn, please rise if you can and uh, state your questions. We have the Bob Cohn Precinct 5. We have them under an enterprise. Why can't they become a part of the town budget? The only reason I say this is many years we took out of their enterprise. They had millions and millions of dollars, and they picked away at it. I mean, at that time it was viable. I'll say something later on, but why can't we take that and put it in the town budget? They are town employees. Through you, Mr. Roger. Sure, Mr. Coulter. Uh, that is our intent, Mr. Cohn, uh, to bring that article before town meeting in the fall. I can't, we read the statute, Biz and I, on enterprise funds today. There's not a single good reason this is structured as an enterprise fund. So that is in the future that maybe they'll come into the town. The fall town meeting. We can't lose the town visiting nurses. We just can't. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, anybody else technical questions before we move on? Seeing none. All right, we're going to go in the pro and con debate on this article, Article 7. Sorry, I was putting it on this. Mr. Uh, Peter Ventresco, Precinct 8. Uh, I've said this every year. These young ladies at the nurse department, they're the, they're the angels to the elderly. And I've seen some of the service some of these other private companies do, and they cannot compare. So I'm asking... Uh, this body or this town, I don't care how much money it costs the town, we have to fund these nurses to take care of our elderly. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you, Peter. Moving on, Pat Colburn, please identify yourself. Pat Colburn, Precinct 4. I was actually going to speak against this, but I'll, I won't. Um, I'm against any subsidies. You know, I'm still bitter about trash, I'm sorry, but. Uh, we went to getting rid of any subsidy at all and to the point of even making services self-fund that weren't enterprise accounts. There was no way I was going to be silent about uh, leaving a subsidy here, but I hear what you're saying. If you're willing to take a year and see how it goes, we did give some time to Cedar Hill and they turned it around. So um, I will just sit down and say I wish you well in the endeavor. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Let me just. Okay. Mr. Anzavino, you're next. John Anzavino, Precinct 4. I just want to throw my support behind this. Uh, this is a, an invaluable service that is provided to our seniors. And there is no way we should stop this. And I, I, I believe the town manager mentioned it was quite clear last year. 
They don't want this service stopped. And I talked to them the other day. They had hearings on trash, and, and the statement was made. I've never seen people say, raise our taxes if that's what it costs to pay to get the trash out. You talk that way for trash, this is a service to our elderly. There's no way we should lose this service. I'm, a, I'm behind you a thousand percent. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Anzavino. Okay, thanks. Just one second, please. I think you were next, Mr. Murphy. Okay, still Peter Murphy, Precinct 2. Um, the BNA, you don't need it until you need it. And I said this before, two years ago I had a stroke. And what happened was I was sent home. I couldn't walk. I had double vision. The VNA came in. They, uh, they ended up, they worked with me. I do want to correct one of the previous speakers. He said, these ladies, there's also a gentleman that came to my house. He was great. He wasn't better than the ladies, but the ladies weren't better than him. They were all equal. I just want to, ladies are better. So, again, you look around here. You need these people, these individuals. They will help you. They will get you back to where you should be. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you. you very much. Next up is Mr. Frank Lyons. Please identify yourself. Yeah, Frank Lyons, Precinct 8. Um, yeah, I just wanted to, you know, give my support here. I'm a little concerned because we seem to be going after kids, old people, cops, uh, you know, the downtrodden. Um, you know, in, in the past, this group has kind of supported these folks. So, and, and once again, you know, same thing here. During the pandemic, my father had a lot of health issues. Uh, and, you know, you might be short of business now, but during the pandemic, it was really hard to find somebody to help you out. And these folks were always there. Um, you know, even under the most difficult circumstances with masks and all that kind of stuff, they were always there. So, you know, I'd like to ask the group to support me. Thanks. All right, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Next up, I have Cynthia Walsh. Cynthia? Who's the question? <laughs> Cynthia, did you say something? Could you repeat that? <laughs> yeah, you didn't. All right. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by John Anzavino. Oh, was it Becca? Becca second it. We'll take Becca. This will be close to Give me a second here. Okay, there were some other people that just will let the board, the body know that the other people might want to be speaking, but it's up to the wisdom of the town meeting reps. Okay, this guy, we'll just take a voice vote to uh, cut off debate. That would, that's what move the question means. By voice vote, it takes a two thirds majority. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Okay, it's unanimous, cutting off the bay. All right, would you like to make a quick summary? <laughs> okay, no. okay. No, I would just like to thank everyone for their support. Okay, thank you for your summary. We appreciate that. <laughs> All right, the motion is before you. Are we ready to go? Please vote now. Simple majority. One, two, or three, yes, no, or abstain. abstain. Five seconds. All right, motion passes. 121 yes, two no, one abstention. I declare that a vote. Thank you, town meeting. Thank you. Should I recognize Mr. Dolinsky? Yes, Mr. Mo uh, Mr. Moderator, please. Can we adjourn this evening and reconvene on Monday night? Okay. I need a voice vote on that. Second. All right. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. All those opposed? All right. There is no doubt in the moderator's mind at this point. We'll see you all Monday evening. Thank you all for your participation this evening. And thank you all to the presenters. Appreciate it.